Hello, WonderCon. My name is David Reed, host of Dial the Gate on YouTube, and I am privileged to be here with uh, a great group of people, the folks behind the Stargate SG-1 role-playing game, which is in, I believe, uh, final production right now, if I'm correct, Brad. That's right. Yeah, we're uh, our Kickstarter ended last October, so we've been in uh, kind of a post-Kickstarter mode where we've been doing some final edits. We got edits for the core rulebook from the fans uh, that were part of the campaign. Uh, we've got a lot of great input, and we've done some some edits that are currently uh, in the approval stage that we hope to go to production with uh, very soon. So we hope that by the time uh, WonderCon comes around, this is sent off to press. So Fantastic. So can we expect this mid this year, a little bit later this year, to be able to purchase? Yeah, the uh, it should be on shelves uh, probably in the fall, most likely, okay. based on we'll where, where things go. And we'll be able to order online too? Yes, yeah, you can go to StargateTheRPG.com and purchase this guy. Awesome. This is fantastic. So what we're going to do today is a demo, is that right? Of what it would be like to play with your friends? That's right. we got this great cast of uh, wonderful players. I think they, they kind of know Stargate a little bit. So, Should we introduce them? I think so. Well, go right ahead. Julie? Hi. How you doing? Julie McNiven, Gin, <laughs> SGU. Yes. Back for round two. I'm back. But it's like I've never been here because I don't remember anything. And I'm your captain. <laughs> so you'll be playing Captain Rodriguez, is that right? Yes. I'm going right. to do captain thing, so watch out, everyone. Simone Bailey, Kal L, Stargate, uh, Kal -El, Stargate uh, SG1. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm awesome. I am so excited to play again. And I too, much like Julie, have only done this once before and it's been like five months. So uh, imagine I know nothing, but and I'm very excited. I'm going to be playing Lonnie, the scientist, because she has C4. <laughs> <laughs> she can blow stuff up. Yeah. And then look at it, it later and go, oh, that looks interesting. That's scientifically <laughs> interesting. Let's grab that. <laughs> Thank you for uh, descending Mr. Alexis Cruz to join us again from a higher plane. What's up, everybody? Good to be here. Good to be here. And who are you playing? Uh, I'm going to be uh, Brevel. I'm the, uh, the team's engineer. All right. Now, he's right. a he's a Colonian, isn't he? Yeah. Is he a Colonian? Yes, he is. OK. One no, of these alternate human type uh, people. Absolutely. Yes. And rounding out the rest of the cast of Stargate, last but certainly not least, Mr. Rainbow Sun Franks. Glad to be Welcome here. Welcome back. Hello, hello, hello. I'm very excited to do this. Uh, and uh, I'll be sober tonight. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You were awfully fun the other way. I was. I mean, it was a grad. It was. It, no, I, I did this like it's an incline. It was a gradual decline. It was. <laughs> Uh, but we're, we're I'm going to have sound mind and body as much as possible tonight. It's going to be great for everyone. Rainbow, who are you playing? <laughs> uh, I think I'm uh, a tier. The Jaffa. The, ja the Jaffa. I'm very excited. I love this guy. Legit. And I believe uh, we I have... I don't remember any of this, so I'm going to be like, how do I do everything? But I'm in, yeah. we're in this. I'm dialed in. Let's go. Yeah. Legit. And I believe we have Josh Pactor. Is that right? Yeah, yep. hello, He's sir. His own character in like some kind. Yeah. Of <laughs> so Josh, uh, Josh is one of our, our our fans who's who was a Kickstarter backer, and um, we uh, he he did such a, he's been doing been such a great contributor to the project and things like that that we uh, we chose a super fan to join us uh, mostly because the uh, David the Davids couldn't join us today because of scheduling things right so. Um, Davids. <laughs> Nichols and Blue. That makes them sound like some elite the David. <laughs> like Blue and Hewlett. Come on. I think it makes it sound like they've got their own show. Like, hey, where are the Davids? They're actually <laughs> in the middle of, of programming. So, hey, you know what? We'll get them again. Where I, uh, yeah. where I, I worked, the, uh, where I worked, there was another Josh that I worked with, and we were absolutely the Joshes. So, <laughs> same team. So. And that also. rounds out the team. Is that right? That's right. And then also today, we've got. Uh, we've got Bill, uh, who's our GM? Bill, he's uh, he's one of our um, uh, writers. He's he's wrote wrote some of our episodes, and he's been a GM 
uh, for us quite a bit. He's uh, really experienced with um, with the Stargate RPG. He's been part of the, the team from since the beginning, pretty much. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill. Nope. Yep. I was in the first round of the uh, private playtesters. Yep. There you go. Uh, back in November 2019, I think it was. It was. Ages yeah. Ago. Yeah, I know it seems like ages ago. We've this this game's been in development for quite a while. Uh, when COVID and everything happening and things like that, it's it's been uh, it's been a long fun road because it's uh, it's only made the game a little bit better uh, with the yeah, amount of like time. A good that wine. Had. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, a year and a half that feels like seven years. So Bill, this is uh, it's now your show. So let's uh, let's kick this thing off. Fantastic. Thank you, Bill, for doing this. Absolutely. A uh, little bit of refresher for our players and introduction for anyone who might not be aware who's uh, watching. Uh, Stargate SG-1 the RPG, or at least this episode, uh, follows a team from an off-world facility called Phoenix Site. Uh, pardon me. Phoenix Site is a place for Earth and its allies to gather in secret to continue the fight against the Gelawuld. Our setting is somewhere around Stargate SG-1 Season 6. Uh, roughly middle of the season, if I remember correctly. Uh, Phoenix team responds and, uh, pardon me, Phoenix team responds to General Lawyer, who's the head of Phoenix site. And today, General Lawyer meets you in the briefing room, giving each of you an informal nod as you take your seats. Contrary to most of your briefings with the General, there are no mission dossiers positioned around the table. Good morning, team. We don't have very much to discuss today, so I'll keep things brief. Your team are going to be taking a trip to Abydos for a standard monthly check-in. He raises a hand, calling for quiet before any of you have an opportunity to respond. Now, I understand that among some teams here at Phoenix site, check-in deployments like these are either looked down upon or seen as an opportunity to slack off on a well-understood world away from the eyes of your superiors. I'd like to remind you, before you get any such ideas, that this is not a social visit. You'll be bringing along a Fred cargo drone loaded up with medical supplies, MREs, and as much clean water as it can carry to help bolster their existing supplies. You'll be off-world for five days, during which time I expect you to work and to provide any assistance the Abedonians require. Unload the Fred, administer medicine. Hell, you help them birth a mastage if they need it. He gives each of you, in turn, a pointed, serious look. These people were the first friends of the Tauri when we stepped back through the Stargate for the first time. It is vital that they know that Phoenix Site intends to honor that history and that Phoenix Site is a place where their best and brightest would be well appreciated. They've got some damn spirited fighters among them. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. In that case, for today's mission, you will be joined by Alara from, uh, from Phoenix 2. Unfortunately, Calero was not available today, so she'll be filling the medic role on your team. You'll be equipped with your standard base kit loadout. This is not an assault mission or even standard recon. This is just going to check in, doing some grunt work, making some friends. You're dismissed. Um. Oh, Sir, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, who's our contact there? You'll be making contact with Skara. He's a local. <laughs> Pardon me. He's a local, well familiar with the area, and the SGC has had extensive contact with him in the past. He's expecting us instead of them this time. Understood. Sure, thank you. Roger, Roger. So our mission is to. You're going to meet not, with Skara and the Abedonians and try not to uh, offend them. <laughs> okay. Are they and easily then, offended? <laughs> not generally. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, you might end up accidentally married or something, but, you know. That only wow. happened once. Uh, yeah. That we know of. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> and we're bringing them clean water and... Medical supplies and... Yep. And they're expecting us. Correct. All right. 
So I'd imagine that uh, Alara is uh, excited to be brought along on a Phoenix One mission instead of her usual team. So she's like double and triple checking everything on the uh, on the Fred to make sure that uh, all the cargo is loaded. All right. So leading the Fred through the Stargate, you're met on the other side by a group of uh, eight young men and women clad in desert beiges, uh, all of whom have assault rifles trained on the Stargate. They mm. pause for a couple seconds before one uh, young man with uh, long braided hair piled up on his head uh, raises a hand, makes a gesture, and slowly everyone relaxes. He steps forward. Anir did tell us to expect new friends bringing our supplies, but I admit... I did expect more of them to be Tauri. <laughs> Please, uh, bring Fred away from the shop eye. There is much to be done and introductions to be made, I'm sure. Very good. Okay. Whoever, got, uh, whoever got stuck with the, uh, the Fred controls will uh, uh, get the uh, thing off the ramp and down to the, down to the, the floor of the, the ring. Yeah, well, probably me as the engineer. Move it that makes sense. Stuff, start directing and just follow along with him. See where he goes. He gives you all a grin. And my name is Scotta. I am uh, hesitant to call myself a leader here, but my father is. I. It is an honor to meet you all. I hear that you are uh, brave warriors, one and all. Nice to meet you too. I'm the captain, and we're here to drop off some medical supplies and check in on you, make sure everything's going well. How, how are you doing? Things have been quiet here for some time, blessedly. But there is much work to do. Uh, between the supplies you've brought us, uh, those will take time, but we are also working on building a settlement outside of the pyramid. Uh, this has long been sacred land, and we are finally reclaiming it. Uh, now that the false gods are gone from here anyway. Um, some of our people have been excavating the pyramid, uh, trying to discover more of our history that was taken from us. And some of my fighters are outside uh, practicing with their firearms. I'm sure that any of you could provide an excellent demonstration. Well, we're here to help. Uh, yes, personal fee file screen is still the correct place. Actually, I should go ahead and move us over here. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, Scara has given you a few options for things that you can do in and around the pyramid. Uh, I'm happy to go through them again if you guys uh, need me to, but give me an idea of what kinds of things that your characters would be interested in doing to help out uh, here at the settlement. Uh, I would be immediately going towards the uh, excavation itself mm -hmm. and see about, uh, you know, giving them some tips on structure and, and digging, and, you know, uh, just help you fine tune some of the people's uh, engineering eye as it goes, make sure things are safe for them, give them a few hacks. Okay. Uh, in that case, go ahead and give me an engineering check. Yeah. And is any... Well, wow. <laughs> there we go, Burbell. Did uh, you think this a game? This ain't a game? <laughs> Natural 20. Uh, yeah. Uh, is anyone else going to help with the excavation as well? Uh, or is this just... I'll head, uh, I'll head down to the excavation as well. I'd like okay. to get things out there. I will too, as a scientist and a scholar, yeah. I'd like to uh, see how they are doing and if they need any assistance. Okay. Uh, if it's gonna be a team exercise, Alara will go with everyone, but otherwise she'll go and meet with uh, the uh, herbalists and healers of the uh, Abedus settlement and, uh, and work with them to get the medical supplies distributed and explain them how it works and everything. Okay. Um, Let's see, Lenny and Rodriguez, go ahead and give me, Lenny, go ahead and give me a science check. And Rodriguez, I'd like you to roll culture. As you guys all fall into your sort of specialties uh, working with the, uh, with the Abedonians. Montage. Oh, did it work for me? Oh, good, it did. 
Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, as you guys are working with the uh, Abedonians, uh, you are introduced to the foreman of the dig you're working on, uh, a man by the name of Jabari. Uh, during your time working with him, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, Burvell, you are able to provide them a ton of information on how they can make their work a little more efficient, uh, get things moved around a little easier, uh, they've been working with very simple uh, pulley and ramp, very simple machines, uh, and you're able to help, maybe not automate, but uh, optimize their setup a little bit more. Uh, during your talks with Jabari, you learn that uh, one of his, uh, that this is one of many excavations happening around the Abydos Pyramid. There's two teams working on the pyramid itself, trying to uncover Ra's secrets specifically and several more teams who are in the deserts around the pyramid, uh, tracking down any signs of old civilization or former gold ruins that they can find. Apparently, uh, one team may have stumbled onto a completely intact ruin, which Jabari is very excited to learn more about. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, Rodriguez, Lanny, you two are put to work uh, helping to catalog some of the artifacts that the Abedonians have been digging up. Uh, and you work with them for a few hours before it starts to occur to both of you that you've been put where you can do the least damage. Um, you're definitely helping out, but uh, you're probably lending a little bit less help than Burvell is with that role. Uh, uh, moving over to Alara, Alara, pardon me. Um, go ahead and give me a medicine check. Okay. Hey. 17. Mm -hmm. So working with the uh, healers and uh, alchemists here on Abydos is a pretty familiar experience for you as an Aturin. They're still using exclusively natural remedies, uh, with mm -hmm. the exception of what's shipped in from off-world. Uh, and those things generally are in short supply. They tend to save them for when there's a real emergency. Uh, so with your help, you're able to recommend some ways that they could maybe get a little bit more benefit out of their medicines, uh, okay. ways to more efficiently grind their herbs uh, and uh, build them into better poultices. Okay. Uh, and that brings us to a tier. A tier, there's a few things to do around the pyramid. Um, some of your teammates have already wandered off to help with those, uh, but there's potentially of particular interest to a tier. They are uh, doing some construction outside that could call for some uh, bulk work, some grunt work. Uh, oh, oh dear. Oh no, having sound issues. I'm okay, I can hear now. Okay, fantastic. I just may ask you to repeat, sometimes it's coming in and out. So. Oh, not a problem at all. Good. Not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, again, virtual tabletop. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, would you be more interested in helping out with construction, uh, helping to train some of the militia fighters on the planet, uh, or just sort of kicking back and slacking off the way the general told you not to? <laughs> um, sorry, what was the second option? It was, uh, I, I heard uh, construction, and then I, it, well, the sound went out. Yep, uh, there was the construction and then arms training, uh, helping to train up some of the militia fighters. We've worked with these people before. Uh, you guys specifically haven't. Uh, you know they have an existing relationship with Earth and the SGC, but this is Phoenix team's first time on the planet. Okay, but there's a, there's an existing relationship, so we're not... Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll help with construction for now. All right, go ahead and give me an athletics check. Oh, yeah. Hold on, let me figure out how to do this. Where did it go? Oh, athletics. I'm so athletic. What? Oh, I'm not so athletic. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I shouldn't have wasted that other one. <laughs> oh. A tier, you Sorry, settle man. in and start uh, start helping out uh, the foreman outside, a man by the name of Kebu. Uh, he talks your ear off and makes it very difficult to get anything done. He says <laughs> a lot about, uh, one, the fact that... Uh, the Abedonians are finally starting to build more stone structures. Um, most of the camp is a tent city, 
but the Abedonians are digging up old stone from old ruins and recycling it. He's very excited about the fact that these old rocks that used to be used to maybe honor the false gods or provide homes for ancient Abedonians are being given new purpose, uh, that the history is being reclaimed and repurposed in this way. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, let's see. So over the few hours that you guys are working or trying to work uh, in some cases, um, you're able to strike up conversations with quite a few of the Abedonians and you are uh, maybe not super familiar, maybe not close friends with the ones you're working with by the time uh, the horn blows calling for everyone to gather for the communal dinner. But you've made enough of an impression that you are welcomed in as friends. Uh, as the first moon starts to rise of the three on this planet, uh, there's a not fancy, but a pleasant meal of uh, lizards fried over fires and uh, skewered and kebobbed cactus fruits and cactus uh, fronds. Captain, does this also taste like chicken? I hear everything tastes like chicken. <laughs> What's a chicken? Uh, it's, uh, it's a bird from from, uh, from Earth. Uh, GM, who's the uh, healer contact that I had? Oh, let's see. Uh, your contact among the healers. Give me just a moment here. Uh, you worked with a number of healers, uh, but you did... The person you spoke with most uh, was a woman named Cirque. Cirque is primarily one of uh, Skara's militants, but she does do some moonlighting with the healers from time to time. Uh, and she was very eager to learn more about uh, the science that you're bringing, uh, the scientific approach to medicine that you're bringing. And similarly, as a naturalist, she's actually excited to hear all about their different plants and medicinal herbs and agriculture in general. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, so during the dinner, uh, again, most the vast majority of the Abedonians are extremely welcoming. You do see a small handful uh, clustered around an older man and uh, and uh, pardon me and a younger man who are keeping you more at arm's length. There aren't many of them, but they do seem a little more concerned about these strangers than many of the Abedonians are. Uh, as the night carries on and dinner continues. Uh, Skara responds to uh, gentle ribbing from some of his friends uh, as couples start dancing around a fire. And as the second moon crosses the horizon, he waves them off and uh, a tear, you hear him uh, cursing them out in Goa'uld, commenting that he's embarrassing him, uh, that they're embarrassing him in front of the guests uh, before he crosses the camp, uh, scoops up a young woman and joins the dance around the fire. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, you guys close out your first day on Abydos having put in a fair bit of work to help these people uh, and are able to settle in for rest in the pyramid where a uh, bit of a makeshift sleeping area has been set up for you. Okay. Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot of sand here. That's a lot of sand, but the, the plant life is still just robust, amazing. Did we just wake up there, like after a bender? Uh, some of Scara's moonshine was passed around. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> but uh, as you guys are on duty, I would assume that most of you didn't drink too heavily. <laughs> Brevel might have. You know what? Brevel might have. Because <laughs> I was thinking, like, while we were doing some of the work, what have you? You know, he has a, 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 a sympathy with refugees and refugee type people, people who have been oppressed, people in the middle of conflict and war, you know, and that's where he came from. So he has a sense so of while he's talking, he's really getting to know some of their stories. He's actually interested in them as people. So that by the time we get to the dance, like he'll just go all in, you know, he is like that for an outsider, but he just gets down with it, right? You know, he just jumps in. He'll grab somebody and flirt with them. No, they are more than happy to participate. Yeah. 
That bird valley's a notorious flirt. <laughs> <laughs> did you see? Did you see his picture? Yeah. yeah. He's doing a bit of a smolder. There's a bit he's of a like, smolder. He's one of these guys. Like easy on the eyes. <laughs> he's got the hair. You know. I imagine uh, Laura's uh, fielding a lot of questions about the uh, ears. <laughs> Probably. Bravel spends too much time in the mirror. <laughs> so, uh, you guys round out your evening with liquor, merriment, song, flirtation. It's a great evening. Uh, you are rather rudely awakened the next morning. Uh, by shouting and sounds of alarm echoing through the pyramid. Uh, heavy, rapid footsteps echoing through the corridors as uh, Skara rushes into your sleeping area. <clears throat> please, please wake up. Something has happened. I, I need your help. Okay, how can we help? A man has been killed. Oh, no. Do I you know what happened? I am not sure. Please, uh, please come with me. Yeah, Alara will immediately pick up her uh, medkit and go, show me, show me. Uh, Skara leads you through the camp over to, uh, let's see here. Leads you through the camp over to this area, circled in red on your map. Okay. Uh, and here at the very outskirts of camp, uh, you see uh, a tear. You recognize him immediately. Uh, Kebu, uh, the man who you were helping with construction. Talks a lot. Uh, <laughs> sorry, what was that? Oh, he talks a lot. <laughs> um, he is lying in the sand. Uh, I would like... Oh, I. Pardon me. Uh, Skara is standing over him with you. Uh, what would you guys like to do now that you are at the scene of this crime? Um, she will, uh, Alara will immediately, uh, start pulling out stuff out of the med kit and, uh, try to shoot a couple people away so she can get down next to the body and, uh, start to, uh, start to investigate the rough, not a full autopsy, just like a rough look into what happened. Okay. I'll go ahead and roll medicine for me. Okay. There we go. 25. Uh, so Kebu, uh, was killed sometime overnight after dinner ended. Uh, he's been here for a few hours. Uh, the marks on his body uh, at first glance look to be maybe claw marks from some sort of animal, but on closer inspection, uh, as you're looking him over, uh, they appear to be from a poorly maintained Jaffa knife in very poor condition. And Can you say that again? I'm sorry, from a what? No problem. Uh, a poorly maintained Jaffa knife. What? No. A tear. A tear. Not cool. Do, 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 do these look familiar to you? I think I've seen these. A tear. You do recognize the marks now that they've been called out to you. You do recognize that these would have been from a Jaffa blade, but one that has not been well cared for at all. Okay. Um, There's some serration on the uh, edge here. See, it's not consistent with a normal. If anybody else wants to be, uh, let's see. Well, I mean, I guess I, I, I think we should look for any other evidence around the room, like any good crime scene. Do we know that if there were any witnesses? No, uh, no one has said that they saw what happened. Are we in a, is the body like out, outside on the ground? Or are we it inside? is outside. Uh, okay. Yeah. Are there looky looks around, people around? People are starting to gather. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, while we sort the rest, I'm gonna start putting uh, little pipes and rope around the little perimeter and just create a visual crime right. scene and keep people go. away. While cool. that's happening, I'm on the lookout for people who come back around, yeah. and, you know, somebody who might be a little too interested, just <laughs> keep an eye out. All right, uh, go ahead and uh, a tier, go ahead and roll either, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll investigation for me, a tier. And uh, Bravel. Investigation? Investigation, yep. Or survival, actually, if you're uh, if you're searching the crime scene itself. And Bravel, go ahead and roll perception for me. Uh, 
Ugh, yeah. And if anyone else wants to be searching the crime scene as well, you can go ahead and roll survival or investigation for me. Can I ask Skara if, did he have any enemies? Skara considers for a moment. I cannot think of anyone among us who would want to do this to another of us. The, for as long as I can remember, on Abydos, the taking of human life has been the domain of the gods, either through accident or through their own violence. There has been violence among us before, certainly brawling after a night of hard drink, perhaps, but never killing. This is not something I have ever seen before. I can think of no one who would want to do this. Well, it seems to me that the knife being an unusual item here uh, is possibly being used to frame one of us. Mm. So is there anyone here that is, is outspoken about not wanting our help? There are a few. He considers for a moment. Uh, while he's pondering that and they're chatting, uh, Burvel, uh, you do notice a few people come and go. Uh, mostly, they do just seem to be trying to get a better look at what's happened. This seems like a truly novel happening on Abydos. Uh No one really encroaches on the perimeter you've set up. They come up close to it, but nobody tries to cross it. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, until uh, the older man that you saw last night and a younger woman about the same age as the victim uh, approached the crime scene. Uh, and Skara, actually seeing them approach, uh, does wave them over, uh, turning to face you just this is Okpara and Shani. Uh, Okpara is Kebu's father. Shani is his wife. Very I'm sorry so for sorry. your loss. So sorry. And she's looking up, kind of just taking some like blood samples and like just generally trying to just keep on medic doing medical medical investigation. Yeah. She got gloves on and she's like going full CSI mode. Shani gets in your way a little bit, falling to uh, to sit beside her husband, but Okpara keeps his distance a few <clears throat> steps back, hands crossed in front of him. And yes, we are we have entered essentially a murder mystery. Uh, so I Simone has already started, but I encourage everybody to take notes as we go. Uh, make use of whatever tools and tropes that you know of from these kinds of stories. Um, some of you may have gotten to participate in some of these stories before. Um, let's see. We all have an interrogation room scene on our reels. <laughs> <laughs> so question, um, mm -hmm. the two folks we saw last night who were a bit standoffish, maybe didn't trust us, um, is that, uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the father's name. Okpara. What was his name? Okpara. No. Okpara. Okpara was one of those figures, yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Hmm. And and the daughter was another, or was it another? It was you said it was, two it was a younger. It was, it was a younger. It was man. a younger man. And is this younger man now dead? No. Okay. Um, I feel like we should split and talk to those two gentlemen uh, just to see uh, what they know and how they feel about us in general, how they feel about us now. Just kind of get a, a general read. Okay. Uh, Skara helps out with that, uh, moving over to Okpara and gently pulling him aside to, uh, to speak with you a little bit further from, uh, from the crime scene. Uh, the old man gives you a nod. How can I be of service to you? 
I'm sorry, was I the one that you're talking to? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> okay. yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Rodriguez. I knew that, of course, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yes, I just wanted to check in. First of all, I'm very sorry about what happened here. And we'd like to be of service to you and help you guys figure out what happened. Um, is, there, is there anyone that you can think of um, who has shown any signs of, of not being happy with what's happening here at the pyramids, um, not happy here with us coming and helping? Um, does anyone stand out to you? He considers for a moment. If you are asking for people who may have been interested in doing my son harm, I cannot think of any, but if you are asking of people who are offended by what is happening here, that is me. I was okay. once a priest of Ra, and to see this place desecrated this way is heresy. Right. I understand that. Um, can you point me towards a person or two who is, say, in charge of uh, this ex excavation, who is very either either physically in charge on site or kind of the the leader in, in making sure that, that you guys learn as much as you can from the past? Would there be a particular person we can talk to about that? There are two. Uh, Jabari leads one team inside the pyramid and Ramla leads the other. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. I, I will, of course, keep you updated on anything as, as we go on. Thank you. He takes a step back and moves to rejoin his daughter-in-law. Uh, and I will say that this, uh, this was close enough that the rest of the team was able to overhear the conversation. Ah, okay. Well, mm -hmm. in that case, I'd like to have a follow-up question with, with him. Go okay. for it. Uh, sir, uh, did you and your son, uh, were you in accord on your feelings about this heresy? No. Kebu celebrated it. Kebu could think of nothing better than seeing the old ways torn down and something new built in their place. Such things filled him with joy as they filled me with sadness. <clears throat> of course. And have you considered or might you consider any potential rivals of yours that might wish to strike at you with, uh, through your son? He considers for a moment and slowly shakes his head. No, there are many who disagree with me, but I can think of no one who would be driven to this. Uh, thank you for your time. I'll let me grieve in peace. He gives you a nod. So, meanwhile, uh, uh, Alara has been uh, quietly explaining to Shani what she's doing to so keep her from being nervous about poking around on a, a dead body, uh, yeah. especially for her uh, husband. But, uh, uh, go ahead and roll persuasion for me. Okay. You are able to keep her mostly calm. Uh, she does look a little distressed about some of what you're doing, but she yeah. remains mostly calm. She she's avoiding doing any of those serious right. like autopsy stuff. It's really just like the the basics. Mm -hmm. uh, she's trying not. to figure out like, yeah, not, not yeah, yeah no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys have picked up a couple more leads. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, Um, Does remind me, uh, so the two people that are kind of the leaders of the excavation, I have Jabara and who? Jabari and Ramla. Jabari and Ramla. Go ahead and throw that in the chat so you have the spelling. Thank you. No problem. Okay, well, I suppose we should um, speak to these two gentlemen. Um, also, I'm not sure if we want to pull aside the wife just to i would like to check. okay why don't yeah. you do that really? uh, 
I'm going to lean over though to uh, Alara and just ask, uh, is it a her? Yes. It's a, yes, yeah. her, her yeah. question mm -hmm. uh, just privately. Mm -hmm. uh, Alara, you yes. don't have any of that uh, revival death Nox kind of uh, magic, do you? That maybe we uh, could uh, revive uh, this, uh, this corpse? Uh, unfortunately, no, I was, I was uh, not gifted with such. All right. Um, I wish, I wish Shawnee, uh, Shawnee, can I can I just uh, speak to you in private? She blinks and pushes herself to her feet to follow you. Shawnee, I firstly, I am so terribly sorry to hear about your your husband passing. Um, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind asking you a few questions. If it would be of help. Now, do you recall anything last night at all? I mean, did he come to bed with you, your husband, or anything you can remember about last night? Yes, he, he came to bed with me after the dinner. All was as it should be. Uh, Rodriguez. It occurs to me, uh, you rolled an investigation check earlier that I never gave you anything for, uh, uh, and uh, a tear as well. Uh, a tear and Rodriguez, uh, you guys do find tracks in the area around Kebu. Um, a tear, what you find, uh, looks like he was coming back from uh, a latrine at the edge of camp uh, when he was attacked. Uh, Rodriguez, you do see a set of tracks leading out toward the edge of camp. Uh, they get out past the tents a few feet into the desert before they become obscured by sand that is shifted over them once it's clear of the uh, protection of the tents. Uh, and I'm terribly sorry about that. Uh, we'll jump back to uh, Shani and Lani. Sorry about that. Shani and Lani. Shani and Lani. Uh, Shani, I, I just want to ask you a question about uh, Skara. Now, I know that he did not want all of this excavation and this new um, advancement, whereas your husband was very excited for, for, um, for progression with what was going on here. Uh, do you think that it's possible that Skara would have done this? Do you mean Okpara, the uh, father? Uh, <laughs> yes. No, no, I actually do mean, you mean our, our contact here. Our contact Scara? Yeah, I thought Scara was the one who didn't want the... No, uh, Scara, yeah. it, it was Okpara, the, uh, the old man who was disinterested in help from Phoenix team and uh, didn't oh. like what was happening around the pyramid. Oh, Scarra right. Definitely oh, right. Scara right. is different. so on board with that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is it possible that your father-in-law, Okpara, might be behind this? I don't know, Is but I doubt it. I, I have never known Okpara to be a violent man, but he does cling to the old ways. He spends most mornings outside the temple praying to Ra. It is as if for him nothing has changed, but I can't imagine him trying to hurt anyone. I'm going to kind of slide in there and, and follow up with, um, do you know of any specific items or scripture that was recently found mm -hmm. that was big, was a big find that may have kind of caused some um, some issues here. Shani shakes her head a little bit. You would have to speak with either Jabari or Ramla. Okay. I am not well versed in the excavation. Thank you. Um, who, who are we speaking with just then? Right now you're speaking with uh, Shani, the victim's wife. Oh, okay, the wife, okay. And then the father is Okpara. That's right. 
and Shani. Mm -hmm. That's actually a good point. Uh, well, she hasn't been participating with them, but uh, she, she's been working, she's been listening in, Alara has been listening in. Um, do any of their stories sound credible to, to her? Go ahead and give me an insight check. And in fact, anyone who's been listening in on the conversations can go ahead and give me an insight check. Brad, thank you for that. Sure. Oh, wow, Alar. Do I look at the first number or the second number? Yeah. Usually the first number. Oh, uh, okay. It rolls twice in case we have advantage or disadvantage where you roll twice and take the better or worse one. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Most of the time, we just look at the first column. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> a tear people aren't your specialty uh, you were drinking last them, night so <laughs> uh, mm. let's see for uh, Alara, Lanny, Rodriguez and Breville, uh it does sound like Shawnee is keeping something closer to the chest she's not being totally forthcoming uh, but she she is not you do not get the impression that she is being dishonest uh as for okpara uh alara you can hear that the grief in his voice is undercut with anger and remorse can you repeat that i'm so sorry no problem um alara picked up that uh, the father uh, the grief in his voice is undercut by uh, anger and remorse. Oh, lying under the surface. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. um. I whisper to the team so that. Okpara and Shani can't hear me. Mm -hmm. I'm suspicious. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that Okpara might be. Uh, I don't know. I, I just don't trust him. I think he's behind I, it. I, I we got to make sure that Shani is safe because who knows? She might be in a situation where she's protecting her father-in-law. I mean, how do we know that Okpara isn't even possessed? Um, I'm not sure, Lani. I, I'd like to talk with uh, Okpara at some point, if that's okay. I think you should. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm with you. I'm, with I'm leaning towards the, the dad did it. The question is how and why. Or what's the nuance there? Well, because we, we don't know if there's like an artifact that was found and then it gave him some kind of... Yeah demon mm -hmm. yeah. powers or something. No, it's, it's, it's probably ask, much simpler than that. It, did we ask it, the wife if their relationship was strained in any way recently? Uh, are you asking if they did or if you could, can? Have, did we? Have we asked uh, Shani yet if uh, Akpara and has had any strained relationship lately with the son? If their relationship was strained for any reason? Um. Uh, Okpara admitted that they had had a uh, a somewhat uh, there were things on which they did not see eye to eye uh, is how he put it I believe now remind um, me who was the other gentleman that was with Okpara last night that we noticed uh, you guys didn't actually meet him uh, you right. saw him hanging out with Okpara but uh, is you he, haven't is, actually met him uh, do, do we have a name for him or is he not uh... not currently okay all right never mind then so <laughs> I also whisper to the team we have we don't know this younger man who was with uh, Okpara, as um, Captain just said, but also um, we have not yet met. I don't believe Scar's father, who was also mm -hmm. brought up in the beginning of of this introduction. So those are two other people that may be of interest. I think that okay. Uh, Scar's father, and then Mr. Kasu, should... hmm? or. Uh, uh, yeah, Scar do you mean uh, Scara's father or Scara's father? Kasuf, yeah. yeah. Uh, Who is that? That's because Kasuf. Really, yeah, that would make sense too. Because if if Kasuf is sort Kasuf? of guiding the place, then this guy, this guy would be Kasuf's rival. Kasuf. Possibly. 
Uh, yes, I read the notes. He's the uh, the father of uh, Mr. Uh, Scott uh, and uh, uh, he was one of the first people to make contact with the original team that came here. And we don't know the name of the younger man who was with Okpara yet. Right. That's right. I don't okay. think so. Uh, also, uh, it, it might be nothing, but uh, Shani, she's she's grieving for sure, but she she's not telling us quite everything. Uh, it's, it's 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 just an impression I got. Um, might be worth uh, talking to her some more. I mean, would there be anything that she would gain? I don't know. Uh, we need to know more information. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I would like to explore the op, uh, Jabari and Ramla, who may have some info for us on recent findings in the pyramid that, that may help us uh, figure out what's happening here. I'll go with you. That sounds good. Unless you want to split and one no, of us. Uh, no, we should go together because you you know a lot more about the details of these items. Um, I, I do. do, I really do. You, do, you know a lot <laughs> and I, I, I'm captain. I just like yeah. tell you where to go, so. Cool. Aye, aye, captain. <laughs> Wrong show. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're not at sea. We're in the sandy pyramids. The sea of sand. Uh, all right. So let's see. While Rodriguez and Lanny are heading off to the pyramid, uh, Alara and yes. uh, Bravel and Atir, what would you guys like to be doing? Um, let's see. So. Uh, she can either keep on working on the autopsy. She's potentially interested in calling back uh, to Phoenix Space to get a full forensics kit. Okay. Uh, and a kind of isolated medical tent that she can use to set up uh, if uh, she can get permission from the captain for that. But uh, otherwise, uh, she'll either continue with that or she'll help out with uh, Atir and, uh, and Bravel. Um. You said it was Bravel and Atira that are, that are... That's right. Okay. Uh, so so I, I wanted to go check out, I wanted to go talk to Kasuf and get that view. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll circle around on my way back, I'll bring you the, uh, the kits you need. Okay. Uh, so in starting to ask around about Kasuf, uh, Skara does let you know that uh, Kasuf still lives in Nagada, the large city some distance from the pyramid. Uh, Skara, while hesitant to call himself the leader of this camp, is essentially the leader of this camp. Uh, oh, yeah. We, uh, I've Kasuf, read the briefings. Uh, Kasuf, uh, let's see. He's a legend. <laughs> He's a legend. He's a legend. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Take five. Uh, Skara is happy to arrange an introduction, but it'll probably be later in the evening or possibly tomorrow before Kasuf is able to make the trek across the desert to the pyramid. Uh, okay, well, let's hope that it doesn't, it won't necessitate that. So in the meantime, Skara may be able to answer some of these questions because he's got his ear in the ground anyway. So um, I was curious, uh, it appears that uh, Opara uh, at his anti-progress faction, uh, if they're getting any traction, it seems that he would be in contention with your father. Uh, how do you, how has that, has that trickled down some? Are you finding some resistance you, you, you know, need to keep pushing back on? Okpara has been very, very vocal about wanting the excavations to stop, about wanting us to stop digging lest we anger the gods. We tell him that the gods are false. He has seen the gods die. He does not listen. He fears them, certainly, but he does not have... The, the old powers do not have enough sway here to be of real danger. Uh, as far as I know, to anyone. Um, Okpara and my father disagree, but beyond that, I am not aware of any hostility. Does he have a, a, 
how large is his following? Like, are they out in the open or is this something that people just whisper about, oh, I don't agree with this idea or have they gathered in any number? Uh, not in any number, two or three at a time, but it's a small most, club, right? mostly they are laughed at. Uh, old hangers on, relics. No one really takes them seriously. Had you uh, heard of any of their recent discoveries, uh, included any weapons from the uh, Jaffa guards? Not that I have heard of. Uh, you would have to ask the teams in charge of the excavation about that. I am primarily in charge of our warriors. And speaking of, we'll jump over to uh, Rodriguez and Lonnie, uh, who are heading off to the pyramid. Uh, you guys are able to find Jabari and Ramla. Uh, Jabari, who both of you met previously uh, during your work on the excavation. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> pardon me. They give you a nod as you approach, and Jabari speaks up. Just, if you're here to help, uh, we're taking today off. Oh, yeah, we're not here about that right now. Um, we just wanted to talk to you guys. We didn't get these details yesterday. Uh, we were too busy tagging and digging and whatnot. Um, so we're curious about any recent findings mm -hmm. here. Any items that were unusual, that may have caught the eye um, or excitement of, of people in the area? Can you think of any? They both ponder for a second. Jabari speaks first. Just nothing from my team. Uh, mostly we have been finding artworks, potteries, the occasional reliquary, but empty. Uh, we still seek the secrets of Ra, but we are having no real luck so far. Have you come across any uh, weapons mm. recently or, you know, ever? Ramla shakes her head a little. No, no weapons. Uh, we have found many things of historical interest, but nothing like what you're describing, no. And, and just one more thing. Um, out of curiosity, are there any Jaffa people here? Anywhere? No. 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 Okay. Just me. <laughs> Just you. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions? Do you have any idea where a Jaffa knife, such as the one that, that killed Kabu, would have possibly come from? Jaffa knife. Uh, as far as I know, all of the weapons of Ra's soldiers were destroyed, uh, burnt with their bodies after we overthrew him. Uh, I can think of nothing. And who was in charge of this uh, burning? <laughs> it was hardly organized. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, to say anyone was in charge would be um, <laughs> ridiculous. It was a mob. Okay. Uh, I will say Lanny. Yes, Lanny. Uh, with your passive insight, you can tell that uh, Ramla too is not being totally forthcoming when she talks about the artifacts that have been discovered. Mm. Uh, she's keeping something to herself. Uh, if you guys would like to, if, or if you in particular would like to try and pick up a little bit of that, you can go mm -hmm. ahead and roll insight for me. 17. Uh, Lani, you can tell that uh, Ramla is specifically uncomfortable talking about this in front of Jabari. Ramla, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Of course. And she gives a nod and follows you. We step out of earshot of Jabari. Is there anything that you want to tell me? Go ahead and roll persuasion for me. And Lonnie, I believe you have an ability that may give you advantage on this. 
trying to remember. Yes, uh, your scholar background gives you advantage on persuasion checks toward other scholars and learned people. So your higher your first role was higher anyway, so <laughs> not really relevant. <laughs> but uh, you want to watch this? There's a pause before she deflates a little. Just cannot tell you what my team has found. For months, artifacts have been going missing. I have kept it quiet. I have kept it to myself. But we find things, and before I've had a chance to catalog them, they're gone. Crates become lighter. Uh, someone is taking things. But I, I cannot tell you if a weapon has been found. I do not know all of what has been found. Do you have any idea of who the culprits might be? She considers. There are those who may be mm, more interested in the old ways who would like to see them in their own hands, but no one specific. Do you think Opara has something to do with this? <laughs> I would not be surprised, but I do not know how the old man could get inside without anyone seeing him. Well, what about that younger man that he hangs out with? She takes a moment. Binra. Binra? Hmm. Binra is actually a member of my team, but he does not follow the old ways. Oh. To my knowledge, anyway. Hmm. And is he related? Oh. <laughs> I'm not here, never mind. <laughs> You're still over keeping uh, Jabari yep. busy. Yep, yep. Is, is Binra related to <laughs> Okpara? No, not the, no relation. They are acquaintances, oh. to my knowledge, but... Hmm. I'll be right back. Um, I walk over to Captain Rod Rodriguez. Rodriguez, do you want to ask any questions over here to, um, um, to our friend? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I do have one follow up. I'll, I'll uh, why don't you? Uh, keep yeah, I'll, the, I'll stand over the here. Bara company. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I just. I just wanted to, to have I want one more question about the young man, Bin Ra. Mm -hmm. um, you said he's not related as far as you know. Um, he's totally fine with, with all this excavation, et cetera. Um, is there uh, a reason why he would feel hostile towards us coming here that you're aware of? Many of us here on Abydos have lost much to outsiders. Outside of those coming from the Tauri, uh, we have had many bad experiences. It would not surprise me if Bin Ra was nervous about your involvement here. Okay. And one more thing. Could you tell me specifically if there's one person in charge of uh, logging all of the items up as they're found. Jabari and I. Uh, okay. Log and then what you you up. log the items, and then where do they go after you log them? Uh, wherever we can find space. Some go to my tent. Some we have found small areas here in the temple okay. to essentially pile them up. And, and is there a specific person in charge of bringing these items to the tents or to a um, designated area in the pyramid? Is there a runner of some sort? No one devoted solely to that task. No, mm -hmm. we all take turns with it. Yeah, I, I would advise perhaps to have one. One person. To, to prevent this sort of losing of items in the future. That is a good idea. Um, okay, thank you for your time. 
she gives you a nod. I walk back over to, what's your name again? Jim, Jabari? Jabari. Jabari? Mm -hmm. Is that who we were questioning? Yeah. And I say, do any of these found items, do you think have any powers? Uh, this was to the, uh, uh, sorry, this was to uh, Ramla. Ramla the, oh, to Ramla, to Ramla. To the Ramla. person who was keeping things quiet. Uh, yeah, just, I have seen nothing of magic, no. None of the gods' magic, just uh, gold and jewels and artwork and pottery. Thank you. She gives a nod. And I, I, I'm going to chat with Lonnie for a second. Um, could this be a simple, someone needs money. They're stealing these items. They need money. Uh, our unfortunate friend found out and was killed for it. I mean, you do have a point because they are low on supplies. So perhaps we need to find out if there were any particular individuals who were very desperate at the moment and, and turning to possibly stealing and selling. Maybe going, taking these items to the city and selling them. Oh, that is right. Because even Kasuf's father lives in Nagata mm -hmm. in a city near the pyramid. So there are other places. Yeah. Um, should we go back to, to Ramla? She seems a little more open than Jabari. He doesn't seem like he's going to say anything. Unless my uh, intuition or insight is not on the up and up. Go ahead and roll insight for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't know anything. So why don't we uh, go back to Ramla? Like should, I roll, should I roll my insight? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> ah, why don't you make up uh, the decision here? <laughs> Lonnie, well, uh, you get the impression that both of these people have told you all they know right now. Uh -huh. uh, they don't, Jabari has been open about what he knows, but he doesn't know about what Ramla's been hiding. And once you called her out on it privately, Ramla was more forthcoming, and you do not get the impression that she is still really hiding anything from you. Mm. Okay. Oh, I say to uh, to the captain, it's possible that Kabu was killed because he caught the thief. Yes. I oh, you, you knew that. Uh, I did. My insight was a little bit better before, mm -hmm. and now I'm like, oh, wait, maybe I forgot, and now you're reminding me. So, but yes, I think that's, I think that's a good direction to explore. Um, uh, who so do you, maybe who do you we, maybe we to? need, well, maybe we need to ask Shawnee some more questions, because she would know where her husband was at. I mean, he was at the dinner, so. totally fine, drinking. She, he went to bed in her bed with her, but then he, he wakes up in another location dead. Yeah. Why don't we head back there? Is, is there anyone else? I wonder. Well, I mean, Binra is suspicious. He's the mm -hmm. um, one who's not yeah. related to dad who was hanging out with. Right. I don't know. Why don't we start with Shawnee? and uh, see where the rest of the team's at. Okay, so we walk over back to... Yeah. Uh, so boom, just boom. to uh, recap something you picked up on earlier, Rodriguez, uh, you found uh, Kebu's trail uh, coming mm -hmm. back from uh, Latrine at the edge of camp. He okay. stepped out to use the restroom and was attacked on his way back as far as you can Okay, tell. okay, um, right. Yeah, and uh, everyone, yeah, Brad is right. You guys do all have radios, so you can communicate. Uh, oh, yeah. You can communicate while you're off doing your own things. I knew that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Should we uh, radio the team? See where Yo, they're at? Yo, team! What's up? Have you uh, learned Funny. anything important? No, 
I've been standing in the same place for half uh, hour. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still drunk? That's the. I've uh, no. Oh, good. I've uh, been waiting for a chance to talk with Opara. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a, a moment to do so. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Uh, Alara, you do have a chance to speak with Opara. Um, he uh, is uh, starting to look maybe a, a little frustrated at the number of times that he's been approached to uh, <laughs> to be talked to, uh, uh, but <laughs> but he does give you a take him to lunch. As you approach. He lost his son, and we're just badgering him. <laughs> uh, sir. Uh, I'm terribly sorry for the loss of your son. Uh, I can uh, just imagine how how uh, hard time this is for you right now. Thank you. Do um, you also have questions? Uh, yes, if it's okay. I do not see what choice I have. <laughs> well, you certainly have a choice. Um, if, if, if it's uncomfortable for you, I, I can I can wait till later. Uh, but some some things were were troubling me, and I was I was hoping you could uh, you could you could help me. Please speak your piece. Uh, you you said uh, before that um, that uh, you argued uh, with uh, Kebu uh, about what he wanted to do uh, with the excavations. Um, did you have an argument with him the night before? We have argued many nights, but not last night. Okay. It seems that, uh, did you have a chance to talk to him recently or not at all? We speak frequently. Mm -hmm. okay. He and I try not to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Can we write um, over and ask him to ask what he thinks he was doing out there last night? Uh, it's possible, but you, you mentioned that the, the tracks uh, led to the latrine. Yeah, So, uh, and presumably yeah. that information would have been shared with the team after Rodriguez discovered it. Uh, right. I think so, yeah. Um, did you notice anyone around, uh, even Shani, uh, acting strangely? Uh, moving around in, in ways that they wouldn't before or, or acting nervously. Uh, anyone, really. It could be Shani, it could be Kebu, it could be any of his friends, uh, any other people on the excavation that you saw. He thinks for a moment. No, no, I... If I am understanding your question at all, I do not think I have seen anyone moving strangely. Or going to places where they normally don't go or behaving somewhat differently. He shakes his head. I have few friends here and those who are very friendly with me have been behaving as they always have. Uh, do I believe him? Go ahead and roll insight for me. Uh, okay. Seems to be being straightforward. Okay. He's, you know, a, a little miffed at the, <laughs> at the questioning, but beyond that, uh, no, not, well, she's uh, not. Yeah, she's not trying to imply him at this at this point. It's mm -hmm. just more that she's trying to kind of get a feel for everything around because right. sometimes people around gold type places tend to have a change in personality now and then. You know, Known to happen. Yeah, once in a while. Uh, but mostly she's trying to just, you know, she'll spend a few moments after just reassuring about what she's going to be doing uh, as far as the investigation, walking him through that. Okay. Uh, you know, then uh, there'll be a point where she even like asks for permission. Go ahead and roll persuasion for me. Okay. Ooh. It takes some convincing, uh, but ultimately with the promise that it will be helpful in trying to work out what happened to his son, 
he does give you permission uh, to investigate the body more thoroughly. Okay. Uh, by this point, it is probably coming a little bit toward evening as you guys have been wandering the camp, uh, performing your various investigations and your interviews. Uh, so as you guys are reconvening, uh, you are approached by Skara. Uh, uh, Jim, one more question, sorry. Yeah. Um, did they uh, approve uh, uh, back at... Um, uh, yes, your uh, forensics kit and uh, medical tent have been, uh, have been shipped through the Stargate. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, lawyer, uh, thanks you for your work on this because he is well aware that this is not what any of you were expecting today. Uh, okay. and it was not what he was expecting either. Uh, okay. So he thanks you for your continued work. Uh, in the evening, uh, Skara approaches you guys. Have have you found anything of interest? Well, so far, we found some. We found out some information that that we'd like to explore further. Um. Speaking of which, how, how often, I know your father is in the big city right now. How often does he, is he able to make it out to uh, the pyramid? He has very little business here any longer. Uh, with Ra dead, there is nothing for him to do. Hmm. Uh, he spends his time in Nagada providing guidance to the people there, as okay. I try to do here. And, and your position here overseeing everything how often are you able to actually be on site in the excavation and kind of be a part of that? Such things were of more interest to my brother-in-law than to me before he returned to the Tauri. Uh, I am curious, but my primary interest is in ensuring the safety of my people, seeing to it that uh, the Stargate is well protected. The Shapa Ai is well protected. Pardon me. Remind, and, remind me, your your brother-in-law, he's no longer here? Daniel Jackson uh, was one of the Tauri who came here many years ago. Uh, he has returned to Earth, and oh. from my understanding, he has since passed. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry. I've read all of his briefings. <laughs> I think he has some videos that, uh... <laughs> um, yeah, there's one more thing uh, we'd, we'd like to talk to you about. In terms of um, how everything's going here financially to the people that live here and work here on a daily basis, is there anyone that you can think of that is, is in a desperate situation? Times are hard for most Anabados, uh, but we generally barter and share what we need. Um, the supplies through the Stargate are very helpful, but uh, as far as finances are concerned, that is, um, I have heard of such things from my time on other worlds, but I, we do not make use of such things. Okay. May, may I ask a question? Uh, do you keep track of who comes and goes to the Stargate? I'm sorry, the Chapa Eye? Very closely. Um, we generally are visited only by uh, those of the Tauri. Mm. And while the Chapa Eye is of, uh, the marvels of the Chapa Eye are great, uh, we are happy here. Okay. Nobody comes from other worlds to trade? He shakes his head. Okay. I did have something that I would ask of you, uh, all of you, if I may. Yes. The sun is falling and the people are afraid. I was hoping that you might help us patrol and protect the camp tonight. Uh, yes, I can help. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys should be able to uh, stagger your watches so that everyone is able to get a good sleep. 
Um, who would like to take the first watch tonight? Uh, one or two people who would be interested in taking first shift. I will happily take first shift. A tier's in. Um, Alara can take first. Oh, okay. Tier and Alara. Oh, uh, I see uh, Burbell. Okay. A tier and Burbell on first sure. shift. And then we'll put uh, Rodriguez, Lani, and uh, Alara on second shift. Okay. Sounds good. So, first watch. I would like, pardon me. I would like a tier and Burvell to go ahead and make perception checks for me. Eight again? Sorry. Uh, perception checks for a tier and Burvell. Okay. Most of your watch passes without uh, much of interest. The camp is quiet. A few torches are still burning, but they burn down and extinguish themselves as the night goes on. Uh, fairly late in your watch, as you're getting ready to go nudge the others awake, uh, both of you spot a figure moving through the camp late in the night. Uh, the air is fairly still, but they look almost like they're shrouded by sand that's being blown up around them, um, shimmering and half obscured in the uh, in the moonlight, stalking its way through camp. I'll say we have to follow them. Okay. Can we wake everybody up and follow them, or are they? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you've got radios, so if nothing else, you can call in on those. Let's do that, and then we'll start following them. Okay. Uh, with everyone waking up, uh, are you guys uh, are you guys going to take sort of a stealthy approach in trying to follow this figure, or are you just barreling right at him? I, I like the stealth approach, personally. All right. Then I would like a group stealth check. Uh, everyone is going to roll stealth, and we're looking for at least half of the team to succeed to keep you guys hidden. Are we full party now? Full party now. Yep, okay. everybody. Boom. Okay. So, Bervel and Alara uh, get some help from the rest of the team in silencing their footsteps. Uh, <laughs> pinning down their gear so that it doesn't rattle quite so much as they move. Uh, and you guys are able to stalk off after the figure. She's a doctor, not a ninja. <laughs> also the wrong franchise. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, you guys follow the figure and watch it duck into a tent. Uh, as you are getting closer to it and getting a better and better look, the uh, the shifting sand around it starts looking less and less like actual sand and more and more like they're just sort of shimmering, uh, half translucent, half transparent uh, as they move. Ooh, can I make a, what do I got here? I got something for that. Uh, I have the advanced technology racial abilities. So uh, would that come into play in recognizing this effect and what the technology is and where it might come from something? Yeah, go ahead and roll a, uh, pardon me, go ahead and roll your engineering check, and then we're going to roll a tension die. Yeah. For those uh, watching at home, advanced, it's, uh, where did it go, where did it go? The ability I'm doing, when you make an engineering check involving technology with tech level four or higher, add TD to the check. So that's what I'm doing. And the tension die for uh, the folks watching at home is a new mechanic in the Stargate SG-1 RPG. Uh, essentially, the tension die is a way of showing that as the stakes get higher, your characters get better. Uh, the more dire the straits, the better you are at doing the things you excel at. And you said do what about the tension die? Uh, so on your character sheet in the third section, the uh, I believe it's settings or options, Yes. Uh, there's a button there for TD. You'll want to go ahead and click that, and we'll add it to your total. Our current is six. Our current is six. That's right. The 
the tension die is a d6. Is that right? Uh, tension die, yes. Okay. So that's a total of 16. Uh, Bervel, studying this as you follow the figure, uh, this looks like almost a malfunctioning cloaking device. Mm. This should... Uh, the, the handful of examples you've seen in the past uh, would have rendered the wearer or the user completely invisible. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't seem to be working properly. It's a little right, glitchy. A cool. little bit glitchy. Yeah, uh, is there, this may be a long shot, and forgive me if I'm, I haven't switched uh, game worlds yet today. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> no I had another campaign earlier. But is there a way I could uh, hack that? to make it, uh, give it a shock or do something, you know, like what kind of mm. manipulation could I do remotely if I could hack it? If you could get your hands on it, you're pretty sure you could make it play on a little teapot. But uh, from here, probably not much you can do. Yeah. All right. We haven't developed any like Bluetooth Wi-Fi that without towers yet. Okay. I think it's like 2003 right now. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. I just can't- Bluetooth drivers strong. are real shaky yes. right now. <laughs> Um, all right. Yeah, so you guys watch this figure duck its way into a camp, this camp, uh, into a tent, this tent uh, that has now been highlighted on the Abydos map. Mm. All right, cool. So he went into the tent. Is there, uh, oh, are there any other exits or opening? How big is the tent? Is it like a two person, a four person, a 12 person? Uh, as tents on Abydos go, it's uh, fairly small. It's maybe. 20 feet by 15 feet, but it's uh, like six meters by three meters. It's, it looks like there's only the one entrance uh, at a quick glance. And can we see roughly what path this, uh, this person took from before? Uh, yeah, let's see here. Uh, give me a survival check. Okay. To try and spot their trail. Everybody? Uh, yeah, everybody can go ahead and roll that. Okay, so uh, Alara and Atir, uh, despite the low light, uh, you guys are able to pick up, uh, you can't necessarily see this entire trail right now, uh, but you know that it looks like the figure came from that direction before ducking into the tent. Hmm. Uh, we have an idea from when we were talking before of what that leads to and what direction where uh, that would go. Yeah, you guys didn't really ask about what was out in the desert. Uh, you know that there's a bunch of dig sites around, uh, and then there's the city of Nagada, but you're not actually sure which way any of those things are. We have a uh, overland map on our uh, our uh, 2003 tablets. <laughs> uh, probably not something that would have been shipped with you for this kind of an expedition. Uh, so, do you guys follow the figure into the tent, or do you continue to stake out the outside? Can we split up? Yeah. You absolutely can. Okay. Um, so, who wants to head where? I'd like to go see where he was coming from. Where he was Thanks. coming from? Okay. Yeah, also. All right. And for the other three, um, this figure has just ducked into a tent. Uh, are you staking out, following in? That's for Rodriguez, Lonnie, um, and uh, Bervel. Do we go in and confront or do we stake it up? Confront! I think, I think what we should do is send one of us in on a, hey, can I borrow a cup of sugar? Uh, I, I dig it. I'm going to borrow uh, a cup of sugar. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, by the way, this, this like, it's, a, it's pretty clear to us, to us that... Uh, Whoever this person is shouldn't have this technology. Yes, this okay. is yeah. the the Abedonians do not have anything like this. Uh, the Abedonians are mostly still using stone and bronze age technologies. Something that would literally render a person invisible, they would call magic. Okay. So, okay. We, so we won't be rude punching it in the face. Presumably not. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, all right, so I'll start with uh, Atir and Alara. Uh, mm -hmm. You two 
break off to follow the trail. Uh, and as before, as you're uh, briskly walking along the trail of footprints, uh, it makes its way out to the edge of camp and then starts to become more and more obscured until there's nothing to follow anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Once it's clear, uh, once it's out in the open desert without the tents around to mitigate the wind, the tracks don't stick around very long. Okay. Uh, for the rest of you, let's see, Lonnie, you duck into the tent. Mm. So I will go ahead and bring you, let's see here. Ma, get out, close the door. <laughs> <laughs> Make a couple of tweaks there. And Lonnie is coming into the tent. And I, I feel like um, Ravel and I are real nearby, just kind of around the corner of the tent or, you know, uh, hiding position, okay. just in case. Also, Perfect. quick question, quick question for the GM. Do we know if Skara has, uh, Skara has uh, radios also, or like, do we provide them with some basic uh, comms Skara gear? does have, ra have a radio, yes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and then we'll, uh, while the tent team is, is doing the tent thing, we will probably radio him to ask him what's in that direction. Okay. I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so tent team, mm. you guys come upon this. You see a man sleeping on a pile of furs and hunched over him, uh, the mostly invisible figure that you've been tracking. A man sleeping on a bunch of furs. He appears to be sleeping. Lanny, you can see him breathing. Okay, good. Oh, he could be trying to murder him. I pull out my sidearm, my breath. Okay. I'm All ready. right, let's go I'm ahead and roll the initiative. Um, on your character sheet, you should have a button for initiative. I'd like Lenny Rodriguez. Actually, I'd like all five of you to roll because once gunshots start happening, uh, the people who aren't at the tent are probably going to want to be at the tent. Uh <laughs> initiative. Where is? Initiative. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just press <clears throat> initiative. All of us? Yep. I'd like everyone to roll initiative and- 21. Oh, no. Is that right? We're, I'm, I'm pretty low there too. <clears throat> oh, you, you have some catching up to do. You gotta run across the desert again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we've got Lanny with a 21, Rodriguez with a six. Burr, burr. And Bervell with a 20. Give me just a moment to roll for the shrouded figure. Okay. So Lanny, you've got the first go and based on the stealth results, uh, it is not aware that you're here yet. I feel like that's about to change. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to engage. Okay. I say to the figure, hey, and he turns around <laughs> and yeah. I go, I go um, identify yourself as I have my sidearm ready. Okay. Uh, Lanny, I'd like you to go ahead and roll intimidation for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh! I Be booyahed most... too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Premature booyah. Uh... Premature booyah. <laughs> I put the boo in booyah. Oh, she's a scientist. <laughs> I love my booyah too soon. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm just bringing these onto the map so that we have them when you guys arrive and so that I have you in the initiative order for that. So how far are we away from the, uh, the tents now? Uh, moving at a at brisk movement, um, you'll be there in a round. Okay. Uh, let's see, where it was? Help if I still have the chat up. A tier had a three, and Alara had a seven. Yep. 
So, Lanny, the mostly invisible figure uh, remains mostly invisible uh, and does not appear to be particularly intimidated by your uh, weapon. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, Bervel, that's going to bring us over to you. Uh, you have heard Lanny call out to the f- to this figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you aren't totally aware of what's happening inside the tent yet. All right, I uh, uh, I'll come in, uh, my sidearm ready, um, and out after hearing that. Uh, and I'm prepared to tackle him, but I want to specifically see if I can tell if it's carrying a weapon. Give me a perception check. Sure. Sixteen. Sixteen. It's tough to see with the flickering cloaking effect, but there is a knife in its hand, or what appears to be a knife in its hand. Uh, Okay. Uh, mm. Then, then I add, put the weapon down now. Okay. On its turn. It turns its back to you guys again and brings the knife across in a wide arc uh, down at the sleeping figure. (gasps) Uh, So the sleeping figure is now a bleeding sleeping figure uh, who cries out in pain. Uh, Atir and Alara, you two do hear this. Did you hear that? Let's go. Oh. Uh, you guys will be here next round. Uh, Rodriguez, uh, we come to you. You heard threats against the unknown party and then a sound of pain that did not sound like one of your teammates. So I'm obviously going to enter with my with my sidearm out mm-hmm. um, towards the uh, illuminating figure. Um, I'm going to call for uh, Alara to. Uh, we're going to we're going to try to back this guy up a little bit. Um, yeah. Can I roll intimidation? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to roll intimidation. There you go. Wow. Well, mm, all right. Maybe are you though? Am I? <laughs> should I? Maybe should I roll intimidation? <laughs> um, okay. Well. It's more uh, intimate than intimidating. (laughs) Okay, so um, I mean at this point, he's probably not going to react nervous even though three people have a weapon ahead of it. Should we we just go ahead and shoot? I think all bets are off. I mean, he's already uh, you know, potentially killed someone else. Shoot him in the leg. Yeah. Let, can I get a what? What would that roll be? Uh, that would be an attack roll. That's on the bottom section of your character sheet. Uh, you have your weapons laid out there. You said you had your sidearm drawn. Yeah. So you'd probably want to click the uh, the dice button to the left of your Beretta M9. Okay. That is a natural twenty, rolling okay. maximum damage. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. you know, I'm good at something, so it's that. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna take him, you know, in the leg. Uh, so he's hopefully fallen to the ground? Let's see. Or did you kill him? <laughs> the figure does stumble down to one knee. Uh, doesn't fall all the way down, though. OK, uh, well, I'm going to shoot his other leg, then. <laughs> <laughs> On your next round? Medic, medic absolutely. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> uh, Lanny, that does bring us around to you. The captain has opened fire. Uh, did we see what happened? Did she get second leg? Uh, just the one shot right now. You guys have one <laughs> shot. Uh, one shot for round. All right, I'm gonna attack. All right, give me your attack. Uh, what? What? Where do I? What? Shoot that other leg. At the very bottom sidearm. There's a dice right next to the sidearm. Side arm. Oh yeah. Boom. Yes, all turns all turns essentially happen simultaneously. Uh and the whole round from the first person back around to the first person again takes about six seconds. 
Um, but okay. everyone is acting narratively. You're all acting at the same time. Too fast for me to stop you from extrajudicial murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's softening of the target up. <laughs> uh, Lanny, you hit as well. Yes. Uh, and it slumps a little bit in the other direction as the uh, as the bullet lands. Uh, Burvell. Uh. All right, hang on a second. Am I the last? Uh, is there anybody else going to fire after me? Am I the we're last? We're on the top of the round. The first up again of us. Uh, we are at the top of the round, so I'll go ahead and bring uh, Alara and a tear onto the board. But uh, yeah, so you are the uh, you're the last person, Bervel, who's going to get a chance to act before the figure does. <gasps> okay. Get his cloak. Get his cloak. Uh, so. I want to try to go around him because uh, I want to get to the uh, the victim okay. and drag the victim or shield the victim and pull okay. him out. Okay. So you've got six meters of movement. You can absolutely do that. And they can just don't shoot me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> during the last round, we would have uh, radioed out, or at least I would have radioed out that we're on our way, and I would have also pulled my tranquilizer. Okay. But I do scream out on my action. I yell, I yell out, take him alive. <laughs> okay. The figure on its turn uh, quickly pushes itself back up to its feet, uh, apparently not permanently impeded by your gunshots. Uh, and Is that... what was that? Just say that I... again. Uh, the figure pushes itself back to its feet, apparently not permanently impeded by the gunshots, uh, and rushes toward the back of the tent. You see another wide arc of the blade, uh, and it cuts a wide gash in the back of the tent uh -uh. Uh, and starts to run and gets to about here, uh, having used a bunch of its movement, just getting back to its feet. Atir and Alara, you can see the figure leaving the tent. Um, uh, stop right there, and uh, I would like to shoot at him with my tranquilizer. Okay, go ahead and roll the strike. Uh, okay, it's a, a DC, uh, what is it, a DC 13 con save. Okay. Uh, you see the dart land and then disappear into the cloaking field. Uh, the figure does not appear to be slowed. Whoa. Okay. Um, Let's see. Brings us back to Rodriguez and then a tier. Rodriguez, the target is making a break for it. If you can hold them down, I can try to knock them out. Whose turn is it? Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, we should be on Rodriguez. Uh, Julia, are oh, you able to hear me? I'm there sorry, I thought it was a tier. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, we've got uh, Rodriguez, and then a tier is on deck. Okay. Um. All right. I guess I'm going to call out for a tier to a tier and Lani. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to call out for a tier and I to run after the figure. Bravel has already pulled the the body mm -hmm. or is trying to, to get the body to the ground or away from the figure. Yep. Um, I'm gonna have Kalara, oh sorry, Alara attend to the figure, sorry, attend to the body. Um, and then Lonnie will follow behind as well That's to right. chase to chase the figure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Bark. I don't know if I need to roll anything, but... Barking out um, orders like a real captain. <laughs> it's true. Um, so, yeah, if you're just uh, moving to chase with a tier, uh, let's see, at this point, I'm going to take us out of initiative for the moment. I would like a tier, uh, Rodriguez and Lanny, 
to go ahead and roll athletics for me. Oh, uh, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, All right. Bad roll. Uh, Rodriguez takes off, um, really trying to keep pace with the figure. Uh, unfortunately, Atir and Lanny, uh, both of you are left behind. This thing is really fast. Even for you, Rodriguez, with that check, this thing is moving a little bit faster, maybe a lot faster than you would expect a human to be able to. Um, for Alara, uh, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, make a medicine check for me. Okay. Alara and uh, Bervel, if you would like to assist, you can roll uh, medicine as well. And she throws her med kit down on the ground and starts pulling out uh, parts of it. How do you get a shirt off? Yeah. Uh, wherever the stab wound is. Yeah. Uh, it's a gash the across the driver. <laughs> the ultimate backseat mm. driver. Bervel has been around a stabbing, it would seem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you two are able to pretty quickly get the bleeding stopped, bandages on, uh, stitches where they're needed, and they're needed. Uh, Jabari is stable and is going to be all right. Uh, Jabari was the victim today, the, <gasps> the, the dig leader. Oh. Uh, you guys couldn't see very well when you walked into the tent because it was dark and he was asleep, but as Alara and Burvel start working, uh, they do realize that this was is Jabari. Oh, wow. Uh, Rodriguez chasing out after the figure. Uh, you're keeping pace for a while, but it starts weaving back and forth through the tents. I'd like you to go ahead and give me a perception check uh, to keep pace and uh, to keep an eye on it. Who's that? Uh, that's Rodriguez. Oh, OK. <clears throat> Uh, perception. There we go. Uh, my chat hasn't been scrolling down on me, so sorry about uh, any delays in my reading off the checks. Uh, that's a perception 14. Rodriguez, you're able to follow it about halfway toward the edge of the camp before you realize that you're going the wrong direction. Uh, the trail you were trying to follow isn't here. You're able to work your way backwards in the direction okay. you came from, uh, and you are able to find the trail again. Uh, but as before, once it reaches the edge of the camp out toward the desert, uh, it becomes a lot harder to follow, and trying to follow it in the moonlight might be next to impossible. Uh, but you are able to see that this was the path that it took in and out of Jabari's tent. Okay. So, I mean, I think at this point, I'm going to radio back to the team that I lost him. Um, he left camp. I can't see anything anymore. It's too dark. So uh, I want to check in with um, everyone else and maybe we can, maybe uh, Jabari is able to speak to us if he's conscious and uh, was he stable. Honest? He's stable. He okay. is stable and uh, he, <clears throat> pardon me, you guys did get to him quick enough that he is able to speak. Okay. okay, so I say we, we head back, all head back to the tent. Okay. Do we need to actually roll for the med kit results in oh. terms of uh, no, that's right. or does it matter? No. Okay. Not this time. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, so when you get back, um, uh, yeah, Jabari is, has been carefully rolled so that he can sit um, hmm. as gently and gingerly as possible. I've had to give him a little bit of uh, pain medication. He might be a little loopy, but uh, he should be okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, friends. <laughs> I believe I owe you my life. I'm just doing my job. <sighs> I, I do not know what help I can be to you, but... What, what do you what do you need from me? 
Can you tell us what is to the south uh, east of, of where we are now, outside of the tent city? Uh, southeast. Uh, nothing for some distance, some hours walk. Uh, I believe uh, Hamadi, Hamadi's team is digging in the desert out that way. Uh, they, they found a ruin recently. Hmm. Do you know what they found in this ruin? It's been some days since we've heard from them. They only come back to camp to check in when their supplies dwindle. Uh, so far, uh, a grand entryway, uh, nothing rivaling the pyramid, but what appears to be an, an intact facility. Wow. It's very, very exciting. Intact facility, what does that uh, incorporate? What does that mean? I've not been there. Hamadi says that uh, <clears throat> they believe it was a temple, but whether to Ra or to some other god, I do not know. My work is here rather than out in the desert. Is there any tension between the two sites? No, no, Hamadi is a good friend. Have the, has the communication between you and the site uh, dropped off suddenly lately, or? Uh, they are due to come back in three days for more supplies, mm. but we do not keep constant tabs on one another. The, uh, the magic boxes you carry are a little beyond me. Mm. Yeah, maybe we can send some people to help you with that. Might be good to bolster communication. How many people are on Hamadi's team? Hamadi's team is four. Hamadi, Antef, Messi, and uh, Nebit. Uh, but it's been most of a week since they were in camp. Um, do they have any relations, uh, friendly or otherwise, to Akpara? I'm not sure Akpara is friends with anyone in our profession. Mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, rather outspoken, to say the least. Uh, and and how long of a walk did you say it was a few hours to the other a side? few hours walk to the mm -hmm. to hamadi's dig do you think there's someone that could lead us there uh, hamadi would be the best person to do so but he is not due back for several days okay is there any other sites that are closer than hamadi's uh, site mm, not in that direction mm. How far is Nagada? Uh, three hours walk, northwest. Mm -hmm. So complete opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And an app longer. Well, we'll all have to rest if we're going to make a trip like that down to uh, Amadi's camp. Is that what we're planning, Captain? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to at least go there as a team or uh, split in the morning, first thing. Uh, do, they, do we, do, do we want to get uh, find some kind of transportation? You want to walk three hours. Is there any transportation here? Uh, you could try and ride a mastage, but they don't like it much. Uh, can we have uh, uh, SGC send us some ATVs? Yeah. That would be something worth calling back about. Okay. And we can file a brief while, while we're at it so mm -hmm. far. Sounds good. So you guys uh, retire for the rest of the evening? 
Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. And we've already made those calls about uh, getting. Okay. Right. Heading back to the yeah. pyramid, calling into uh, okay. Phoenix site. As you guys are leaving Jabari's tent, I'd like you all to make a perception check for me. Okay. Looking for evidence or anything. Mm. <laughs> I got <laughs> losing. A tears just got one. <laughs> Tear apparently is still drunk. <laughs> Tear smelling the pillows. <laughs> All right. So as you guys are leaving, uh, let's see. Lonnie and Rodriguez and Alara. Mm -hmm. uh, the three of you spot someone creeping in to camp. Uh, a hunched figure uh, ducking between tents in the southwest part of camp. She uh, moving to the southwest. All right, let's surround. Yes, sir. And she'll get the drink out again. Yeah, I would have my weapon out as well. I think we okay. should have our weapon. So, uh, creeping up on the figure, uh, actually, let's go ahead and do group stealth again as you guys are moving to quietly intercept. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. We go. Doctor, not a ninja. <laughs> Doctor, not a ninja. Uh, a tier, uh, with that natural 20, that's going to count as two successes. Uh, unfortunately, Alara's critical failure counts as uh, two, two failures. Uh, so that comes out in the wash. Uh, but Rodriguez and Lanny are able to, uh, with some effort, <laughs> keep the rest of you quiet, uh, as raring to go as you are. Um, and you are able to move and surround the figure without being detected. Uh, when you do reveal yourselves, uh, uh, what what is it that you guys say? Can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> <laughs> um, have we? Is this the same figure? This is not the same figure that you were just chasing. Uh, at least by eye, you don't see this cloaking field around it. What you do see is Binra, the young man who was hanging out with Okpara. Uh, uh -huh. I knew Ooh. it. I'm so sorry. Can you, <laughs> so sorry. Can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, you guys uh, come across Binra, the young man who was hanging out with Okpara uh, the night you arrived. Oh. Well, good thing we didn't shoot him. <laughs> uh, speaking of shooting, he is not walking with any sort of limp. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess we should ask him what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you up to, Benra? <laughs> hey, Benra. <laughs> Benra, what are you up to, bud? I am enjoying the cool night air on a very, in a very hot place. Hmm. Why are you pointing your weapons at me? Why are you hunched over? Is your back okay? We have some treatments for that. <laughs> I did... the. I sprained myself in the excavation site today. Oh. Where did you sprain yourself? My back. Your back. Your back. I see. Have you seen oh, anyone hair. else running around in the dark? Until now, it has been a blessedly quiet evening. Or at least oh. a blessedly private one. <laughs> Do you mind emptying your pockets? He looks rather frustrated. Go ahead and roll persuasion for me. <laughs> okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Empty your pockets. <laughs> Please. 
I think, the, I think that intimidation there. <laughs> yeah, that one's out. Oh, of you're right. You're right. Sorry. But we'll we'll keep the persuasion. You said you asked nicely the first time. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vinra turns out his pockets. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. He turns out his pockets. A couple of small black pebbles drop to the ground, but other than that, okay. Pockets are empty. A tear, you want to go pat him down? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let's think. All right, uh, go ahead and give me, pre presumably with the rest of the team keeping him still, uh, go ahead and give me yeah. uh, investigation with advantage. Okay. So we're going to use the yep. bigger of the two numbers. You'd uh, forgive us for our occasion. Just give me that tear. I can't. <laughs> I mean, you should have chosen me to intimidate him. Oh. Well, Atir, you spend a moment patting him down. You don't find any weapons. Got uh, it. <laughs> from those rolls, I, like, grab his balls and apologize. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ugh. We'll be talking in the Stargate HR. I'll <laughs> <laughs> going in the report. <laughs> Now I mean, that you are this, done, think, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, at this point, we should probably inform him of what's happened. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was another attack. Another attack? Yes. And you suspect me? Well, you look really suspicious. You're the only one running around in the dark. Hunched okay. over. We don't because not you suspect your back. you. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing yeah, more what to he say. said. I have nothing more to say to any of you. I am returning to my tent and going. Do you to want sleep. to know who I believe him? was attacked? In terms of like where he was, do I believe him? Uh, where he was, what he was go doing? ahead and roll, Alara, roll insight for me. Okay. Uh, Rodriguez, he pauses when you ask that. Who has died? Well, fortunately, no one's died because we were there and we chased him away. But um, Jabari, he's, he's injured. Is he going to be all right? Yes. Small blessings. Uh, Alara, as for your insight check, he is definitely not being honest about uh, the nature of his walk tonight. Mm. And she just kind of gets that look, like she's that little kind of twisted, doubtful look. Hmm. Um, I, can we just, I'd love to stop him from going back to his tent and further interrogate him. Yeah, if you guys do want to push him a little harder, yeah. Uh, uh, Let's go. There yeah. is a uh, another one of the new mechanics uh, in the Stargate mm. RPG is actually uh -huh. interrogation. Uh, this is one that has not been shown publicly before. Uh, the playtesters, uh, in fact, the playtesters, I don't think even got access to it until Kickstarter time, Brad, if that's right. Uh, so yep, the Kickstarter right. backers have seen it, but uh, nobody else. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through that real quick. Let me just bring those uh, new technology. New technology. Uh, well, so and I've, I've seen it, but I haven't had a chance to run one yet. So oh, fantastic! Yeah, yay! That should be exciting. Right. Look at the uh, desk with the lamp and the very uncomfortable chair. <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys are able to strong arm. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, strong arm Benra off to a uh, a quiet place uh, where you can talk to him a little uh, more intensely. Did, did you uh, get that med medical tent built? Yeah. There we go. Uh, so the way this is going to work is you guys are going to pick one character who's going to lead the interrogation. This is the person who's actually going to be pressing the subject for answers. Uh, that person can take one of three tactics. Uh, 
each of which has a different uh, kind of check that can be made for it. Uh, someone who might be good at investigation or perception can take the lead by questioning. Uh, someone who's uh, perhaps a little bit better at talking uh, could try and deceive the subject into giving information with either deception or insight uh, to trick them and read their responses. Uh, or uh, you can use uh, intimidation or persuasion uh, to try and manipulate their ego, building them up and breaking them down to try and get them to slip up and give you information. Uh, so I'd like to start by us figuring out who would like to lead the investigation and what tactic they'd like to take. Okay, what about the, uh, the, the, the classic good cop, bad cop? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so how would two people put that together in that scenario? So the people who are not leading the interrogation uh, do have options available to them to assist with the interrogation uh, that we'll get to in a second, um, either by also bluffing, uh, just observing the target, uh, or by providing more general support uh, uh, in scrutinizing their answers. Uh, but we'll talk about those in a little more detail once we know who's going to be leading the investigation, because I think going through this step by step is going to be the easiest path. Right. Uh, so well, our, uh, I can go through the options again if you'd like. Yeah. Um, we can have someone use investigation or perception to question the subject, deception or insight to try and trick the subject, or intimidation or persuasion uh, to try and bully or convince the subject into providing some answers. I'm pretty good with perception or insight, or if anyone else wants to. I can bully. <laughs> <laughs> A deer can bully. Yeah. Uh, the captain should be somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, I could do, I could deceive. So given, given uh, where characters have had a chance to shine today, I think my recommendation would be having a tier take the lead on this one. Because uh, mm -hmm. a tier has had a little bit less opportunity to yeah. really... Uh... Well, he keeps rolling ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Only on the things we'll, that matter. We'll, we'll help out with that. <laughs> you keep not blasting your staff. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you, you should have blasted that guy when you had the chance. You let him run away. I know, I was trying to, I didn't even get a chance. Jeez. Yeah, a tear is what I, who I was thinking about when I was yeah. the good cop, bad cop thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to start smacking him around a little bit if you want. All right, so oh, a wow. tear, a tear uh, interrogation takes place over a number of hours. Um, <laughs> your subject can withstand up to a secret number of hours uh, before they will either break and tell you everything they know uh, or harden and accept their fate uh, and refuse to tell you anything. Uh, subjects who are particularly resistant to interrogation might even be able to lie to you after they reach that li limited number of hours. Uh, so I'd like to get an idea of about how long you want to push this, uh, about how long you want to risk questioning uh, Binra uh, before uh, I didn't get, I didn't get the last sentence. Sorry, it cut out. What was uh, it? Uh, I'd like how to long? know about how long you want to spend uh, interrogating Binra. Now, the longer you spend, the easier the check you have to make at the end becomes. But you run the risk of pushing him to the point where he breaks uh, and may not be able to give you reliable information. Okay. Point of order. Also, what time is it? It is still mm -hmm. the middle of the night. Okay. Uh, so we're Abedos also pushing has, uh, what was that? We're also possibly pushing, pushing exhaustion ourselves. Possibly, um, but you guys were able to get some uh, some rest prior to watch. So uh, I'm going to say that we're not running the risk of that just yet. And the, uh, what, do we, what do we think on how long? I think can the so. doc maybe, uh, can we uh, have the assistance of some kind of uh, medical, you know, drug use? Does he have some kind of uh, truth serum or something, whatever that is? Uh, I'm not sure that uh, truth serum Maybe is something in a that standard accentuates the kit. pain. <laughs> oh, God. What was it? I mean, 
Moonshine. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's all kinds of things that she can help with for that. I don't think uh, Pentothal is uh, in the kit normally, <laughs> but, uh, or whatever the modern equivalent is. But um, I I suppose if you guys wanted to uh, just leave him alone with Moonshine for the night, get some rest, yeah. and come back in the morning, you might have uh, <laughs> you might have a tactic there. <laughs> Well, or force I mean, him to drink. No, I mean she's probably gonna look a little uncomfortable with uh, like actual like physical abuse, but uh, she can at least make it look like she's you know prepared to treat him medically afterwards. Okay. Now, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it here is going to do, but I'll. I'll be here to help after. <laughs> well, that's why I was hoping if he was on some kind of drugs, then we wouldn't have to go so heavy on him. Because everything I mean, would just be heightened, you know. I, mean, I so, think two hours is is good. Two hours. Two. I was gonna say four. Really? Okay. You're I was going gonna ham. say till the sun came up, but <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah. like all but, night. You know, four hours. The exhaustion that your mind has after being yeah. questions, you start to either go one way or the other. So, you know, that, that's where the road goes. Yeah. Two is like two isn't even a long movie. So, all right. So. Here's what we'll do for the moment. I'm going to bring us back over to our landing page so that everything works correctly. Uh, to start with, I would like for everybody to give me a moxie roll. Moxie roll. Moxie is, uh, I think you guys did this in the last one shot. Uh, this is sort of a, uh, a social or intellectual initiative order rather than uh, determining the order of play for combat. This is for doing things like social encounters and uh, things like that. Uh, so we've oh. got... It says my role isn't valid. Is that uh, I was afraid that might happen. Oh. Shoot. Um, it did roll. Oh. Uh, I was hoping that moving us to the landing page would prevent that from happening, but apparently it didn't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go. just plug in our moxie orders here. L with uh, 23, Alara with five, Lanny with seven, and Rodriguez with 21. All right. So a tier, uh, let's see. We know what your action is going to be. You are going to be acting to interrogate the subject as the, uh, the head of the interrogation. So uh, We'll start going down the list. Uh, Burvell uh, has stepped away for a second, it looks like. So I'll- uh... I'm here, I'm here. Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> no worries. Um... I'm in my kitchen so I can get my snacks. Oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Gotta get my snacks before the interrogation. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, uh, popcorn for something like this, really. Just, <laughs> yeah. this is gonna be a show. For the good uh, cop. Yeah, donuts and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Bervell, to help assist the interrogation, um, there are a few things uh, uh, that are recommended as things you can do. Uh, you can either, uh, if you want to play some good cop, bad cop, you can interact with uh, the interrogator and the subject together. Uh, that'll give, uh, pardon me, that'll be based on your deception uh, to basically play good cop, bad cop. Uh, and uh, offer comfort where maybe there might not actually be any. Um, alternatively, you can use insight to try and observe the subject and get a better look at uh, exactly what he might be doing and exactly how he might be responding to things. Uh, or you can provide more general support with investigation. Okay, so my investigation is the best method mm -hmm. for me. Uh, I would recommend somebody else pull the insight like the doctor yeah. for the same yeah. reasons right and then the captain uh you said that you were good at deception right like your skill is high so you be the good cop here okay and the rest of us like i'll do the the, the observing mm -hmm. you know how we do yeah. how we've been doing yeah you're doing the support i'll do the observe and i just uh, yeah and I'll, yeah. I'll make the popcorn <laughs> the... okay She's Alara, uh, like, don't Lonnie, mind me, I'm just working on some stuff. And she uh, like pulls out needles and 
como es somos que creamos para es like since it's over such a long stretch it's like as everybody you know uh, a tear is there on them but everybody comes in and they do their part of the shtick and then we come back out to confer behind the glass kind of thing and so i'm sort of strategizing as each thing happens we glean a little more i'll strategize all right now you go next and tell him this and you go him and tell him this because uh 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 Rarell, you know, said that uh, he was lying here, et cetera. But. Absolutely. Uh, Lonnie, I, I will say just because the three tactics have been picked doesn't mean we can't double up. Uh, so if you did still want to help out with the interrogation, you could also help with either uh, deception, insight, or investigation. Uh, I think also the default uh, plot mechanics also let someone who is, isn't actively participating to give someone else a plus one. That's in the, uh, that's, yeah, that's essentially where this is going. Uh, you're thinking of the convince encounter, which is another one of the uh, new mechanics that was introduced uh. that was part of the public play test. Uh, for this one, uh, rather than sitting out uh, to give a bonus, uh, for this, you've, uh, because this is a little more active, uh, yeah. you've got to uh, make a skill check. Uh, so, Lonnie, whereabouts would you like to be participating here? Uh, or, or do you want to sit this one out and let the uh, let the other? I do. The I do want to sit it out. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So in that case, uh, we're going to be interrogating for sounded like four hours. Thank you. So Bervel, uh, I'd like you to go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. Feel free to role play that. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that's awful. <laughs> there's a there's a thing we like to do is is roll and then roll which is you roll the dice to see how your results are and then role play the results Ooh. Cool. Uh, my home table has a lot of fun with that uh in other role-playing games it's pretty common for people to describe what they're doing and make a really eloquent argument and then roll a three <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> so by rolling the die first uh, if you want to play out some of what Vervel is saying, uh, you can do that here. Uh, it's optional, though. Yeah, it's it's not required. If uh, if that's not the, not something you want to do, we can move on to the next person. That's not yeah. A it's more like I, I I made a wrong guess. I'm like I think he's thinking this. I'll tell him that, and I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that brings us to yeah. Rodriguez. Rodriguez was uh, helping with some uh, deception. I'd like you to go ahead and roll deception for me. Hmm. It looked like you were taking notes, but actually you were just doodling some sketch for a new yeah. component you were working on. I got distracted. Ooh, oh no. Eight deception. It does not sound like he... Uh, he buys what you're telling him. Uh, okay. Let's see. How many dice can hate us today? Uh, Lanny was sitting out. Alara, you were providing support with uh, with general observation, if I remember right. Yeah. Right. So go yeah. ahead and roll insight for me. Oh, there's insight. Okay. Uh, Alara, that is successful. Uh, as you're mm -hmm. monitoring and uh, showing off your collection of tools, uh, you are able to give a tier a bit of an edge uh, mm -hmm. as you guys proceed uh, through the interrogation. So approaching the end of the four hours, a tier. Yeah. I would like you to go ahead and roll intimidation for me. And I would like you to roll this uh, with advantage because it sounds like you guys were getting him drunk as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here comes an intimidation roll as a badger. Hey. Didn't even need the, didn't even need it. Uh, Nineteen does beat the DC you were going for. Uh, so over the four hours, you wear him down and wear him down. Uh, what? Uh, let's see. What information specifically are you trying to pull out of him right now? <sighs> Uh, well, first, the specific thing that he was hiding. What he what he was doing uh, while he was out that night. Okay. Any is there anything else that I'm missing, guys? Um, if he knows anything about the missing items from the yeah, 
if he knows yeah. anything about the thievery. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Did he kill Kabu? Also a fair question. What is he uh, cloaking devices? <laughs> <laughs> Over the course of the four hours, uh, you start to break him down. And finally, he gives in to your questioning. Yes, I know about the stolen items. I have been collecting them. And tonight, I was in the old mines. I have been harvesting Nakwada. Uh, Burvel uh, you, uh, and Lani, uh, both of you are very familiar with Nakoda. It is a very dangerous chemical, uh, the foundation of all Goa Wold technology, uh, useful for making energy generators and for building bombs, among other things. Uh, the Goa Wold, uh, Atir, you would be aware of this as well. Uh, the Goa Wold generally use their oppressed human populations to forcefully mine as much of the stuff as they can get their hands on. Who would have asked you to do this? Or were you doing it for yourself? Asked me. No one asked me anything. I collect these things. I gather these things because of you and those like you. Like who? like the Tauri, like you, like those who would disturb the order of things. After Ra was killed, we were visited by Apophis and Haruur. We were attacked over and over again. And now they are saying that there is a new god, Anubis, who is on the rise and a danger to everyone. Eventually, he will come here. And when he does, I will be ready. I will be the only one who is ready. I will have artifacts for him, and I will have Nakwada for him. And I will prove my value. So while the rest of my people are forced back into the deserts and back into the mines, I will be watching from the pyramid in comfort. Are you working with anyone else? No. I have no interest in sharing this bounty. I have no interest in sharing this favor. They did not listen. Okpara has tried for years to tell them that what they are doing is wrong. No one listens. So I take it upon myself. They will suffer and I will be richly rewarded. Well, except you won't. Because you killed someone and you gravely injured someone else. So killed you're someone. not going to be in the do pyramid. I, do I get that sense again from what he was saying? He looks, as you say this, he looks panicked and beside himself. You don't even need to roll insight for that. Yeah. I have not hurt anyone. All I have so, done is take artifacts from the temple and knock water from the mites. Okay, okay. So it's just purely coincidence that while you're doing this, two people are attacked, one is killed. I think it's Is that right? Captain. You can go ahead and roll uh, insight, uh, Rodriguez, if you'd like. In fact, everyone can go ahead and roll insight. You can all hear this happening. Uh, uh, Captain, I think he's telling the truth. Insight. He's lying. I know it. Uh, yeah, Rodriguez and Bervel, you're having a hard time reading him, uh, especially given all of the things you have to make you doubt him. It seems uh, unlikely that this is completely honest. Uh, Lonnie... See, you questioned him too long. I told you, don't question him so long. <laughs> now the guy's lying. Talara, anyway. Lani, and a tear. Uh, you get the impression that he is being sincere. Uh, he perhaps is not a good person and perhaps might not be the most morally upstanding person, but you don't get the impression that he actually hurt anyone. He does mm. not seem uh, he does not seem particularly bothered by the fact that they will be hurt by the Goa Wold in the future, according to his plans, but he has not harmed anyone as far as you can tell. Has he traded any of the artifacts with anyone? Why would I give away what I need to curry favor? Does anyone know what you're doing? No, if I told anyone, they would start, and there would be less for me. 
Is anyone acting suspicious around you? Like, like maybe they think you're up to something? Not until the last few days. Not until you. Oh. So we killed him. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. I, you know, I, think, I think he's greedy, for sure. I'm sure he's going to enjoy a long conversation with uh, Skara, but... Uh... Rodriguez, as, as you make that comment to him, you do see his head tip slowly. These things did not start until you came. I have been working in the pyramid for months. I have been harvesting Nakoda for months. You come here and people start to die. What have you done? I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you try to repeat yourself? <laughs> that was uh, great. Say that again, but slower. Uh, All right, take it from the top. Okay, reset. Everyone <laughs> reset. <laughs> It's just the last. Rainbow, uh, he is he is accusing Phoenix team of having some oh. uh, uh, culpability here, as the murders didn't start until oh, I heard that part. It was oh, just okay. the last sentence. Whenever I say it, it's like the last few uh, words seem really uh, important, and then it's like. Rah, 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 rah. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> he was uh, he was saying, it. "What have you done?" Oh, okay, that's what I missed. Okay, perfect. I'm still drunk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For a tear. Oh yeah, we haven't done anything. We're just here to help. Didn't he say that other people were rattled by uh, us being there? Like who, who else has been affected by? Uh, well, that by small us? group, the dad. I think we need to talk to Akpara again. Akpara. Okay. Right. Well, hang on a second. Unless though. someone disagrees. Uh, no, I don't disagree with that, but I want to make sure, like, what are we doing with this guy? Like, did, we have to arrest him or something, something right? tonight. Cooling? Did he go steal something tonight? Uh, what, he admitted that tonight he was in the Nakoda mines. Uh, what did, oh, he got Nakoda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to arrest this guy and then, you know, yeah. see what Kasuf has to say. And, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, SGC is going to have something to say about this. These are valuable resources. We have to him as long as possible. Yeah. Um, I think we should turn our attention maybe towards the camp. Uh, to the southeast. Uh, out toward the uh, the dig site, you mean? Yes, the dig site. Uh, the, the, this August new dig this site. new temple. Okay. Oh. Actually, while while we have you here, do you know anything from this new dig site, Vinra? I have heard that yeah, Hamadi Hamadi's has dead. unearthed something of the gods that he has found a ruin, a temple, mostly intact from what they were able to tell us during their last visit. I have not seen them in many days. I have not been to their site. Did they behave strangely last time you saw them? No. Okay. He continues to eye all of you as you're questioning him. I think at this point, um, Captain, should we hand him over to Skara? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you guys uh, zip tie up your prisoner, Binra, uh, and bring him to Skara. Uh, <clears throat> Binra. Why is he bound? Is he behind this? Uh, not entirely behind it, but we did catch him uh, stealing artifacts and various uh, equipment and dangerous materials, including Nakwada. What is that phrase? He had a little something on the side. <sighs> Skara looks more disappointed than anything else, frankly, uh, which as we all know is worse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we will handle him. For now, we will find a place to make him comfortable. Inra, I cannot... I will speak with him later. For now, we will secure him. Um, while we're here, have you had recent contact with the camp to the southeast, uh, Hamadi's camp? 
Mm. No, no, they have not returned in some time. Their supplies are likely running low. They should be back in a few days. We suspect that something's happening or people from there are behind this. That is unfortunate. I, uh, anything that we can do to help, I am happy to provide. But for now, perhaps rest. My people will handle the rest of the night's watch. You have been working for many hours. Yeah, well, I will go stifling on at that point. So. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. So let's see. Taking the time to spend uh, at least a few hours resting uh, to refresh yourselves and ensure that you're uh, able to face the day ahead. Uh, you head out from the pyramid in the morning uh, to find Okpara. Uh, on his knees before the pyramid, uh, praying and crying uh, in the open space outside of the pyramid. Um, Atir, you uh, being the person most well-versed in the Goa'uld language, you hear uh, many cries for forgiveness to Ra, uh, from Ra. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to engage with that at all. You are I would welcome to go. go talk to Akpara then. Yeah. Uh, Alara will approach also. As you approach, he looks up at you with tears in his eyes and on his face. Just, what is it that you want? Um, I'd like to ask him what he's apologizing for. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll uh, Persuasion at here. Persuasion. Like to assist him? Yeah, uh, so at here, we'll roll that at advantage because Alara is assisting. I'm going uh, to go pop squat. OK, <laughs> noted. <laughs> I have a break. Yeah. Uh, a tear with uh, oh. uh, a tear with uh, Alara's help. Uh, you are able to uh, <laughs> with Alara's help. You are able to pry a little bit of information out of him. Yep. Uh, Smooth over some of the ruffled feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you just go back into intimidation. Also. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different set of ruffled feathers. <laughs> I apologize for my failure. I apologize for my people. The gods have cursed us. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we got started a little bit late too anyway. Yeah, we had some technical issues that slowed us down a little bit at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. For real, like legit. Yeah. Narratively. Yeah. Like, at this point, Skara yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd, imagine, I'd imagine a tear is not too impressed either. Yeah. <laughs> mm. why, why do you cling to the worship of of these beings. Before the Tauri, things were not any more comfortable than they are now. But we knew what to expect. We knew that Ra would come. We knew that he would want his metal. Now, every day, something new. Every day. Uh, you can tell that he is speaking hyperbolically. Um, okay. New gods come and claim our world. 
And now they have sent a demon. They have sent a curse. I know the old stories. I know what this is. And none will listen. What is it? It is the demon. It is Kanum's yes. demon. Kanum's demon. I would like everyone to go ahead and roll culture for me. Who's Kanum? What is it? Culture? Oh, culture. Yep. Come on, you rough nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Captain's got it for the win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Captain. She's, she's read her notes. <laughs> you are, uh, <laughs> you're pretty familiar with Kanum in uh, Egyptian mythology and by extension to some extent uh, with what role he would have played among the Goa'uld. Uh, Kanum was the evening aspect of Ra. He was considered to be Ra when the sun was setting. Uh, and on Abydos, uh, he once ruled the planet when Ra wasn't around. Uh, Ra would leave for months at a time in his ship, and Kanum would remain and govern the planet in Ra's absence. Uh, from what you have learned from your previous studies of the Goa'uld, uh, Kanum would have been a particularly brutal ruler. Did I miss anything super crucial that would help me? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. They asked what he was apologizing for. He said his failure to uh, his failure to keep the Abedonians on the straight and narrow, essentially. And now he believes that uh, this demon is back to wreak havoc. Correct. That the Abedonians have provoked the wrath of the gods. Right. Uh, through their desecration of the temple and through their actions against the Goa'uld. Okay, I wonder, and obviously I would say this as an aside, if, if we think Okpara would be sacrificing, perhaps, to please Ra, to ask for forgiveness and uh, see if that's something he's capable of. Like that he killed somebody as yeah. a sacrifice? Like like as a like, I'm sorry, we will do I'll I'll try to do better with them. I'll you know, but that's I mean it's it's I guess unlikely since it's his own son, but yeah. uh, and you're just trying to get this read off of him as a person in general or yeah, if, if that's something that, that we as a team wanna in to go down that road at all, or do we wanna We wanna interrogate to... him because I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we could run another interrogation. A tears ready to uh, roll one. <laughs> not on intimidation. <laughs> not on intimidation. Intimidation has been pretty consistent. So you guys are theorizing that uh, Jabar, I'm just getting lost with the names. Jabari might have sacrificed uh, Kabu as a sacrifice. That Okpara might have. Okpara, the father. father. Oh, Okpara. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okpara. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Okpara. Yes. And the, uh, because, Pardon because me. <laughs> yeah. Jabari and uh, his son were very um, progressive and wanted to learn more and wanted to go down that path of, you know, new age enlightenment. Um, I don't Wait, know. Wait, who, who's Jabari's son? Uh, so Jabari and Okpara's son, Kebu, the... The, the first original. Victim. Oh, victim. I thought she said Jabari's son. Sorry, That's, sorry, sorry. The... Oh, that was what confused me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But the uh, we... pronoun confusion, I think. Wasn't we? I think we started out with that theory, but didn't wasn't that debunked when because the daughter-in-law mentioned something about uh, yeah. somebody was seen doing something they shouldn't have been, and that oh. was theoretically yeah. why he was killed. Yeah. So there's that angle. Yeah. There's also the angle that with. Kabu being killed, and then Jabari, his friend, mm -hmm. being attacked himself uh, by yeah. an assailant we saw, I think leads us away from this particular theory you guys are going on. So, so should we should we yeah. head out to the other site? 
I, um, I think that's the next step where we're going to find some real answers. Have we gotten uh, those uh, ATVs? One more question for, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, ATVs have been shipped out for you guys. Awesome. Okay. Uh, one more question for Okpara. Did he know where Kenum kept his um, palace or temple? Kenum's rule was long ago. I do not know. Oh, how long? Do you remember? No, nobody in this generation? No. Generations back. Many. After Kenum came a set. Until she displeased Ra. Team, do we have a theory who the runner is? No, not this time. Okay. Uh, but somebody who had access to this stuff, uh, we got to find out if, uh, what's his name, had anything of his actually missing? The stuff that he stole. Did the stuff he steal get stolen? Yeah, we, did. yeah, we didn't check about that. The only other thing we haven't, the only other thing we haven't followed up on is um, uh, Shawnee also seemed like she was holding something back. Yeah, uh, true. Do we yeah, think maybe there, Shawnee yeah. knows anyone intimately from the other site? Possible. We haven't, maybe we haven't. she's having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty yeah. dry out there in the desert, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, sort of. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, if, if, not, if not outright, which is less likely, but they might have, so here's my theory. Suppose there's some more of these fact of this faction of, of uh, fanatics who are a little bit more sophisticated in their organization so far. And this is their way of, you know, they're handling Shawnee, right? They were using her because she would probably of the three be the most pliable. Uh, Oka is already on board, but he's not maybe on board with how how far these extremists want to go, right? So the entry was Shawnee, and then things went south at some point when Kabu discovered them, or Jabal discovered them, or uh, or through Shawnee connected to uh, Jabal, and then that wrapped up Kabu, something along those lines. But that's the theory I'm thinking. So the real, the real conspirators, his handlers, are going to be at the other site mm -hmm. because they know here, like this, this site here is mostly progressives. Mm -hmm. You okay. know, uh, if there's going to be a little bit of time between when the team goes to go down to that campsite and this morning, uh, uh, Elara will take care of the full autopsy in the medical tent. Okay. Uh, you do not find anything abnormal beyond what you already know. Okay. Uh, as for following the trail out of town toward the other dig site, um, you guys have your ATVs. You can cover the distance much quicker than you could on foot. Mm -hmm. um, I would like everyone to go ahead and roll survival for me uh, to follow the trail into the desert. And by the way, hey. I have my background is refugee, mm -hmm. so I gain advantage on any. Um, no, I'm sorry. I, uh, Ooh, well, this is weird. On any athletics checks to navigate unknown wilderness environments. In mm -hmm. my mind, I've read that as survival, which seems to make more sense than athletics. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, athletics because you're you're good at moving through those environments rather than necessarily following something through those. Um, well, okay. okay. Um, the language is a bit weird on that. Like you, ha you have to think about it. So I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying like the, you're you're just figuring. Yeah, of course. But uh, for the writers, I guess the, the the language is a little it's vague enough. It brings up that question. Noted. Good to know. For Arata's sake. So Alara and Lani, uh, uh, and Bravel. Uh, the three of you have a very easy time uh, picking up the trail and following it out into the desert. Um, the sands do start to obscure it again, uh, but pretty shortly thereafter, all of you pick up the trail as it becomes bloody, 
Rodriguez and uh, oh. Lanny, it uh, appears that having shot your running subject was useful, uh, as there is now a much clearer trail for you to follow. Uh, you guys head out into the desert following the path uh, for some time uh, before you spot a pair of figures in the distance, uh, one half carrying the other, dragging them through the sand. I think it's the guy who's been shot. Yeah. Right. So at this point, we would drive up and surround them. Yeah. Absolutely. We're on ATVs. I'm in a dune buggy because I just, that's what I ordered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is all terrain. Uh, so, yeah, you guys pull up uh, toward these figures. Uh, taking a look at them, uh, one of them looks healthy. The other one looks to have been beaten. Uh, at first glance, neither one appears to have been shot. They're somewhat off the trail that you're following. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the woman who is carrying the other man raises her hand and waves for your attention as she spots and hears uh, your vehicles approaching. <laughs> and as you pull up, just, you have to help us, please. What's, what happened? We let it loose. Let, let, let what loose? We let the demon loose. Uh, come, come, bring, bring him over, and uh, she'll pull out the med kit again. And as you guys are preparing to uh, tend to the wounds of this figure, uh, because this is a Stargate episode, we are going to go ahead and uh, excuse me, right back. Drop us onto this screen. Ah! <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, part one has been concluded with the reveal of the researchers having unleashed the demon uh, to be picked up next time in part two. Woo! Okay. Thanks, Bill. Like we did it. Thank Great you. Great job, brother. Thank you. Uh, Thank you guys, you. too. This has been an absolute blast. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was really excited to get the opportunity to run a, a game showcasing a, a little bit more of uh, a, what I hope is a little bit more of a Stargate episode feel, getting to explore mm -hmm. the character side of things a little bit more. Uh, it's I more promise... like the, the Bad Batch version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Playtesting this? Also bad batch. Uh, <laughs> uh, it turns out if you're not a detective, it's hard to play a detective. But you guys, <laughs> great! This has been a blast. Yeah. So yeah, so thank you. So Alexis, did uh, Bill do a good job playing Scara? Yeah, yeah, it was excellent. It was excellent. <laughs> it's a little weird, you know, interacting with myself when I'm not playing myself. <laughs> so, it's like you're cheating on you with you. Yeah, yeah. It, it really was. It was like that Spider-Man meme where like... <laughs> yeah, when I, uh, when I realized that my choice of setting would uh, probably have me playing Skara for you, that was, uh, that was a moment of excitement and terror, and I am yeah. so happy. Well, yeah, there was a part of me that, that was like, <laughs> Sir, I accept your judgment. <laughs> so you had written this before you knew that Alexis was coming on? I had written this before I knew for sure who we were going to have. Uh, I knew oh. there was a chance that Alexis was going to be involved. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I, I wasn't sure exactly who we were going to have until uh, pretty recently. Oh, I love that. Yeah, well, this, well, it's a... It, you're right. It was a really good Stargate episode. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. digging the investigation. We had a little combat. We touched on all the various things. There's some interesting NPCs that we have to work yeah. to keep track of, also. So that's good. It creates that engagement. Well, a lot keep of Star for me, bro. a lot of Stargate is not you know combat. I mean, that's that's one of the things we designed this game for is so that it's it's not just about combat. You know, a lot of D and D games you go in and it's just like hack and slash, so to speak. So. But when you watch a Stargate episode, it's not like that. It's it's the majority of the episodes. There's no combat at all, right? Right. So we try to model it around that. Not a lot of space for doing the murder hobo thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
Well, we hope that we have expansions at later point, and uh, Rainbow, maybe you can meet yourself at some point, right? Oh. <laughs> I would. Crazy. Yeah, we don't want to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would be very excited to run any one of these actors meeting themselves. <laughs> I, I think that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, for He's sure. Still not allowed to name anything. <laughs> can't trust with anything. I don't know what. Yeah, right. Especially and naming you things. You don't want to interrogate him either. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, it'll go fine. Don't worry. What's, 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 that was fun. Speaking wrong. of, I'm, I'm glad that we got to experience new technology yeah. with that's great. Yes, I, uh, I am sure that I did not explain it super well, but uh, you did great. <laughs> thank you guys so much. This has yeah. been an thank absolute you. blast. Yep, thank, thank you. Everyone. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was awesome being able to play with you all. Uh, thank you, Brad, for, uh, for uh, inviting me. I really appreciate it. You bet, Josh. No problem. Julie, what was your uh, take on the on the episode? Um, well, I definitely, when I was assigned captain, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it was, it was fine. I, once I started realizing I had to kind of be the one that walks in the room first and assess things and delegate, um, I felt more comfortable. I love that moment in the tent when you, uh, we gave out all the orders. That was perfect. Yeah, that was spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> that was good uh, Simone how about you what's your take on well it? yeah I just want to piggyback on that Julie you were a boss so that was great oh thank um, you yeah, I never I really... get cast at them so I appreciate this opportunity <laughs> oh, I, I enjoyed that a lot um, for me it was you know thank you so much you know really great job I, I think I personally just got kind of overwhelmed with keeping tabs on the names and then to me there were just so many options of what to investigate because there's mm -hmm. dig sites there's mm -hmm. you know people you could talk to da, 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 da. and I I just was like okay I, I kind of I got lost in what is the best thing to do yep yeah, it's kind of what um, so a, I think. I think that's why I kind of just did the Simpsons like into the bush <laughs> and, and, and let these guys kind of go for it because I was like, oh, I don't know. That's kind of what a murder mystery is like, right? You, there's so many yeah. options and dead ends and stuff that you could take. A too much information at every turn. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And red herring, several red herrings. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, Bill. Uh, real, Thank really, you. really yeah. great episode. Thank really. you so much. All right, well, that's it, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, taking the time here in um, part two. Um, I'm not sure who all might be involved, but we're going to try to get another cast together. Uh, if this team is not quite there, uh, maybe we get some uh, Mr. Hewlett or Mr. Blue uh, also involved uh, coming back in. Oh, hey! Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and a cameo appearance. Who's this? <laughs> this is my son. He's he's pretending he's shy now. Oh no, he's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Did he play too? Um, no, but I'm. She, he's good at make believe, so I'm sure um, he will be one day. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's this imagination's great for this game. So. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, thank you a lot. I really appreciate you guys coming in yes. and joining us and everything. So uh, we'll we'll see, we'll see you next time. I appreciate it. Okay. You've come from all over the galaxy. You represent the best of your people. Jaffa, Tokra, Tolan, Unas, Langarans, Atorans, and the men and women of the United States Air Force. You're here for reasons all your own. Some of you inspired by the heroes of the Tauri. Some of you to uncover the past or explore the future. Others finally having that chance to fight for your freedom. Whoever you were, why ever you're here, that's behind you now. We rise up against a common enemy, and that enemy has made us brothers and sisters. Any differences your races may have, put them aside.
You're all members in Stargate Command. And you are Phoenix.